yes, yes. Smoking on some Slurricane tonight. But uh, yeah, it so it's called Slurricane. Slurricane? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I okay. like the name, though. I like the name. <laughs> I, did, I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> I have some other strains, too. It was called Mac, M-A-C-1. It's, Miracle uh, Alien Cookies? Yeah, bro. What? Yeah, I can't I smoke know. that during the stream. That shit had me stuck. No, on, because uh, it's a watch it's a, party. It's an indica. It's an indica. It's a indica leaning Ouch. hybrid. It's a oh, it's yeah. a hybrid, but it's indica leaning. And it was handled, you know, by hand from the through the whole process because you can you can go and get the weed that doesn't run through the machine, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, I had so, a bear send uh, send me that once upon a time. He grows all different types of stuff and he grows it all natural like and um yeah that was one of the things he grew dude and it was like primo that's primo stuff right there. wow yeah okay so like just a dumb question here because i don't do that but not because i i mean it just you said it, doesn't it doesn't do anything for you. me allegedly because i've tried yeah. but right. um so but the other day i heard somebody say um, something like get organic or get, or maybe it was on the tell on your telegram channel or something that somebody was like, dude, do organic or something like that. Or somebody's mm -hmm. telegram channel. Yeah. Well, so is the stuff out there in the mainstream kind of like in the, any of the places where you can get it? Like, how do you know what you're getting? If it's government funded? Well, like, see, that's why you, in my opinion, you should, you should, start trying to source everything you get from from people you, where you know where it's coming from yeah like my butcher you know what i mean um it's the same thing or growing your own food you know grow your own everything if you can but if if you can't like just do your research and wait for in, in my opinion you should wait for things to come along for you if you're not going to do it yourself um, be careful going to seek it out because there will be someone waiting for you typically uh, the government funded dispensaries are the ones that are given the, the stamp of approval i would be wary of all that type of stuff and they might be good at first but here's how i look at it now right i, I kind of got mixy mixed feelings with it now now that i have a card and i look and if you think about it <clears throat> well that's got a different if you purpose are, on its own too yeah but i'm saying but if you are worried of like what you're getting and I know there's some conspiracy theorists out there that share around like, oh, this government, this dispensary weed's gonna make you gay or whatever. You know, you hear all kinds it, of fucking. It shit. made the frogs gay. Right, right. <laughs> so, so what I'm well, so before you go to a dispensary, you're just buying it off the streets, right? <clears throat> you don't know where it's from. Well, or unless you find somebody, which it's better out can. of a Mexican dude's asshole than um that was. <laughs> but here's the thing. Condom. Here's the That's thing. I've been that. to. But here's the thing. I've been to a few dispensaries. There's some I'll never go to. I'll never fucking go there. I seen what you got, homie. That's not real weed. I don't know what you got in that place, but nah. Nah, I'll never go there. And I'll tell people never go to these places. I won't even call them out like that. But, you know, personally, nah, don't ever go there. I tell but my family members. 110% THC content in this I, it ain't, it don't it even feel or look these. like real weed at all, right? But yeah. then there's other places that I've gone to that support local growers. Yep, exactly. That's and you can look up the strain and it'll take you straight to the grower, to the farm that it comes from, right? And you can look up them. And most of these growers, like most of the weed you buy off the streets, are coming from growers that also sell to dispensaries. They're also growing for dispensaries. So it's kind of like, it's not like it's government weed. It's the government found a way to get into the pockets of the growers and then they flipped it, made it legal, and get a profit off of it. It's right. Like, how do well, we, I'm, we're well, making I'm so to... much up money off of it being illegal. How do we make more money off of it being illegal? And once they figured that out and set it all up, then they established it. You know, that, well, I don't see, know, that's in how New York, it. they approved only like 10 like properties when they first started doing this to grow it. So, like, that's more what I'm talking about. Not necessarily like yeah, the right, protocols right. they're putting in place so they can get their cut. Well, those kind of places are the places I will tell people not to go to here. There's yeah, like a place exactly. called Cure Leaf and, and uh, man, there's trash ones out here. I don't like, yeah. why do you guys keep going to these places? Yeah. But, and then I forgot what I was about to say. I'm sorry. But uh, I, you know, <laughs> if it's not for you, it's not for you. It's not for my wife. It's not for everybody, you know, yeah. to each their own. 
you know, and it's like alcohol is not for everyone. People get triggered that I do break in the chain and smoke weed on, on all my other shows. They're like, I'm a hypocrite, you know, and then they tell me because they hate plants. Community coming at me like you're not sober. Like, I think I'm sober. I know what unsober is like. I know what not being sober is absolutely like. I've been there. You know, it's like you, people give a bad stick, stigma on weed. One, it's people who've never done it or have never done anything harder than weed. So they think it's on that equal playing field when it's not. It's put there for a reason. It was made class one narcotic, not just because of medical benefits, but because of so many benefits. It was a huge aspect of our life in so many ways. They fed it to cows. You know, we, we, we built our sails on it. That's how we sailed around the world was using hemp to create the sails, for the ship. It's, it's, it was a huge part of our life. And they completely taken it out of, out of our lives. And now they're controlling it as they slowly bring it back in. You know, they, that's all what it was. All what it was for. And I've actually seen uh, people talk about reports and studies that, you know, the whole MK Ultra program and how the one, there was one thing they didn't like those people to do, and it was smoke yeah. weed. Why? Yeah. Because not all the time, but most of the time, it would break down the programming. Yeah. And they hated that. Oh, snap. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one drug MK Ultra patients couldn't. Yeah, totally, dude. Wow, dude. Yeah, and they also don't want anybody smoking tobacco for some weird reason. They did a hard flip. Yeah, right. You noticed that, right? Now it's uh, uh, yeah. all those truth um, commercials and, you know. Which is owned by the big tobacco, by the way. And, and yeah. when it started, I believe doctors were pres prescribing it to pregnant women. Hey, you're stressed because you're pregnant? Have a, have a Marlboro. Have a cowboy killer. You're good. It's doctor approved. <laughs> Exactly. You know, it's funny because I think there's actually some truth in that because there is, there are benefits from what I've seen anyway to like organic tobacco that like you guys said, you either grow yourself or you know where it comes from. And um, I also heard about, you know, there was that whole like snake venom in the water. And I'm not saying that I believe all that, but there, this guy I listened to talk about it said that they do a lot of work with snake venom peptides and they can get them somehow into like medications or whatever, or who knows what, right? They could, because usually you can't eat snake venom. Your stomach enzymes will, you know, break it down. But they made these peptides that get past that. And he was saying one of the things that uh, will ruin the effects of that is tobacco. It kind of like inhibits that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, tobacco has a lot of medicinal effects. When Like, yeah, if it's not sprayed over a thousand times after it's dried each time, like with Monsanto and all that, then you can have, yeah, like for asthma and stuff, it's got like public information well known to, um, you know, has helped people with those things. People have reported it at least. Not yeah. any claims. And from what I heard, people started, and I seen this firsthand because my grandmother in the early 80s fell asleep with a cigarette in her mouth and almost we got down. We got to fix your audio, Brandon. Yeah, dude. Too it's long. still coming in crackly. Um, to... they're, they're saying it sounds good, but I can they're hear They're lying to you. On my side. Lying. Ben Brooks is lying to you. Yeah, that you sound terrible. terrible. You sound any better. Now you're just really low again. Let's try it. But you're Keep also kind of Brandon. crackly as well. So what was it that when you turned off the sound, like what the was it, the sound this. something or other? Yeah, you want me to try that again? Noise suppression or uh, background yeah. noise? Or... Be Do you have a fan going? Echo cancellation. I could wear my headphones if that might help. Let me try Maybe. That. I'll, I'll get rid of that noise cancellation. You sound good now. You sound fine now. Not to me. I can barely hear him. <laughs> you, you too, James? I mean... I don't know. He's not talking right now. Uh, well, can you hear me now. So, how's everybody doing? No, it's no, not great. It's, it's not, not great. No. I'll, I'll, I'll get something going then. <laughs> yes. So, guys, this is um, Sharon and Brandon from the Over Sharon Show. This is their first live stream. But their YouTube channel doing. is brand is on Brandon Bonanza. That's yes. where you're gonna find the Over Sharon podcast. I will actually drop a link in the chat for their Thank next you, show, James. which is tomorrow. Okay, see him crackling. Brandon crackling for sure. Somebody said that. Yeah, they're saying a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. I'm on. All right, B. Check your audio. Check yourself. 
<laughs> for you wreck yourself, boy. Let me do a Yo, quick shout out. What? THC, what's up, Mike? Ben Brooks. Well, Ben much Brooks love. thinks it sounds fine. I don't know. L Jupiter, what's up? That's Lore. What up, Lore? How you doing, what girl? What up, Lore? You should make what Brandon up, do the shout outs. What up? <laughs> so we can test the audience. So we can, yeah, yeah, right? You want to do the shout outs, bro? Yeah, do shout outs, bro. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hang on. I'm just working on something else. Because if I could. Oh, okay. Marky Rizzo, right. what's up? What's if up, I actually Shannon? had my headphones plugged in, I could probably hear it. That was the problem. Effie Nation, <laughs> one Neo, much love. Let me see who's over here on the rock. What well, up, Mojo? Maybe, maybe we'll rock Big maybe Pine Sailing, JJ, mic. Ben Brooks, JJ. So I keep reading the same ones. T A Truther's Hour Comedy. That's hilarious. All that's, right, how's that? Boy, Mike. that better? Oh my that's gosh, so much better, dude. Yeah, it's way noise, better. That noise went away too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no yeah. crackling, dude. All right. Well, I think I think what happened before is maybe it was catching feedback off of my speaker or something, but we're good to go now. This is, I mean, cool. listen, I've been podcasting forever, and we always wore headphones, so I've been podcasting right. like since 2013. I think it's crazy. Yeah, well, Brandon let's get into I, that. Let's get yeah, into how you that. how yeah, all yeah, this yeah, started, like how you two came to be, and all that. You know, let's let's get into. All that. right, I'll give a brief history of myself, and then we could catch it up with Sharon because my broadcasting history goes back quite a ways so uh, i started doing stand-up comedy in 2013 and i did stand-up comedy till about like ever like hardcore like three four five times a week probably till about 2017 and then i was in and out of it 2018 i was still doing it a lot and then uh i just kind of faded out through 2019 but then i started my own open mic again <clears throat> at the beginning of 2020 and then we all know what happened so it only lasted a couple months that's all i gotta say and uh so but the whole time i think around oh so maybe it was 2014 about a year later podcasts were like really hot all the uh comedians because i used to know tons of comedians and they all wanted like a, a podcast but it was harder back then because you needed more equipment kind of unless you really had a you know, good computer, or whatever. So I DJ weddings. That's what I do for a living. So I got this really nice tip one weekend. So I just used it and bought all this equipment. And I got in with a guy who was running the comedy club that I uh, worked at. He was like the comedian that, but he was also during the day, he was the manager. And he used to headline at um, the casino around here. And he was, you know, he's doing a lot. He could do like a full hour, which is pretty sweet. So uh, I got started doing a show with him and he was very abrasive <laughs> he was like old school like he would just fucking tell you and just shit on you and all this stuff and i could deal with it and a lot of the other comedians because they were younger because at this point i'm 46 now so in 2016 that's when i turned 40 so i was like in my late 30s when i started doing this and i'm old school like i grew up you know like a nerd and getting picked on then i went to the marine corps and I was telling Sharon, I used to be a little more heavier and my last name is Smith. So they call me Smitty. And then one day they started calling me Titty because <laughs> I had like man moves. So Boy, um, boy, I'm just kidding. No, yeah, exactly. But um, I, I, so I'm used to like a lot of that shitting on and very accurate. It never really bothered me because I would just, you know, fight back at them verbally. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the environment I grew up, grew up in. So I could deal with him. Yeah, you got to be quick with it. Yeah, like, exactly. Quick witted and quick with it. Like it just yeah. seemed like we yeah, quit be, it. Oh yeah. That's how it was with growing up with my family. Like yeah. we talk to each other, we're yelling at each other. So yeah. it's just the normal in, in our family. Yeah, I used to communicate through yelling and uh, one of my <laughs> girlfriends one of my girlfriends one time was like, Why are you yelling at me? And it was like, I'm not yelling at you and then I'm like, Shit, I really am because I'm just <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> six, five, I have this like booming voice, you know. So <laughs> I had to learn about that for sure. So it's the top and the bottom of the East Coast. Exactly. My wife actually helped me realize that. She's like, you know, always telling me uh, the way I came off. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. This is just how I am. It's like, I need to stop that. I can't just use that as an excuse. Like, well, this is how I am. Like, no, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, I yeah was definitely dude. going. Through. I didn't mean to cut you off. Right no, now. no. The, I think that's great. And I think the way you're treating it is great because. So many people are hard on themselves when they, so when you find a behavior, it's just like, I'm sure like an addiction, like we've all, we can get into that. I've overcome my own uh, set of addictions. And, but when you start to want to change early on, a lot of times you get hard on yourself. Like I would try not to be angry because I used to have anger issues. 
and um and I would get mad at myself when I got mad. I'm like, why did I get mad? But now now I laugh at it and I'm, I'm just kind of easier on it. So it's good to see you treating it like that. Because I think I always say if you're trying to better yourself in any way, you're, pr- you know, like in a mental way because of all this abuse that happened to a lot of us when we were younger. If you're trying to fix that and heal that, you're better than like 90% of society. So give yourself a pat on the back. You know, I always tell people that was one thing I had to overcome was being hard on myself. And once I did that, now I just, like I said, I laugh at everything. Sharon knows. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. 100% I vibe with that. See, this is why I wanted you guys on because I love that kind of stuff right there. That's straight up mellow vibes. Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. Like understanding yourself better. You know, we're growing, we're learning every day, challenging our beliefs, all that stuff. You know, challenge yourself and the way you look at yourself. You know, we're all we are our own worst critics anyways, you know, more than anybody. Right. right. And uh, I'm so confident with who I am. Really, nobody can put me down better than myself. Like, you don't know me. You can say whatever you want about me because you don't know. Like, you don't know what kind of I know what kind of piece of shit I was. You don't know. I know. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of whole like. Uh, my name is Earl. Remember, yeah. have you seen that show? Yeah, kind of like right in your wrongs, you know? Yeah. Know. yeah, no, dude, 100%. And that's, you can make it a fun journey uh, as well. You know, oh, look, Laura in the chat says, amen. Amen. You tell them, Laura. El Jupiter. That's right. <laughs> Much love. Thank you for being here. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, what was that? So uh, anyway, so, but by, you know, I could dish it out and I'm very accurate and I'm, you know, I'm a comedian, right? And I've always been one of my whole life. I didn't get on stage till I was older, but I can accurately point out what's bothering you. And I, like I always tell people, I'm like, listen, you don't, if you don't want to fuck what around, that's fine. Brandon. <laughs> but like, you're going to say something to me and I'm going to like intent, unintentionally forget it. Like it just, you know, like five minutes, but I'm going to say something to you and you're going to remember it the whole, your whole life. Like, especially if you're not working on yourself and you're, you know, you're going to be like, ah, he said that thing. <laughs> so yeah. Right. Um, yeah, cut deep exactly but in that whole so bringing it back to the show that i was doing it was called the pat oats is sad show because <laughs> his name was pat oats and he just had this demeanor about him it was really funny and uh so we were doing the show and i also had another show on the side with this other comedian who we were both kind of just a couple years in so it was more just like for us and i had i had a bunch of friends because i was a dj for a while so i had like a bunch of facebook friends that would kind of watch stuff um, but it wasn't anything crazy in the Pat Oates show though. All the comedians would listen to it cause he would talk a lot about comedy and like give tips and advice. And he ended up like writing, he started to write a weekly article and then he wrote a book about it. So he was very, really, really smart. But the thing is like a lot of comedians, they could dish it out, but he couldn't take it. So I had to be like really careful because one time after 2020, 2021, we started a show and, uh, I was saying something and I forgot what happened, but I just got frustrated and I, I would started fucking with him, but, and I kind of let him have it, have it. And he got mad on air. It was so funny. And I'm like, dude, I'm just joking. And I'm like, I'll just raise my hands when I'm joking. So, you know, so we had this whole thing happen, but before that, when it was more of his show, I didn't want to get into that stuff. So I kind of just like sat there and listened and then I would chime in once in a while, but it made me I know, I mean, I'm talking a lot now, but it made me a really good podcaster where I could just sit back and listen and let somebody else talk and then also bring stuff up and get recalls. So it was a really good training also as a fun show. So I went through all that stuff um, and then we kind of drifted away. He started, I kind of showed him how to do it on his own because what happened to me was I got into spirituality and I got into like uh, symbolism and all this self-healing stuff. I got into like plant medicine. So I started to drift away from the comedy world. I would still do some stuff, but it wasn't the stuff I was saying people didn't want to hear. And after the Trump election, everything got really lefty and a lot of the comedians, like I would mess with them, but it was just not the same. And it wasn't, it used to be a lot more fun to go to open mics and it just wasn't fun anymore for a while. Um, (laughs) You know, because yeah, they trying to kill comedy, man. They, yeah, they, they, dude. I the saw attacks on yeah, comedy man. for sure. And it was other comedians doing it. Like this one dude, you're gonna love this story. There was this uh we say we'll say bike thief to be nice, lady, you know, young, she was going to Yale. All right. <laughs> and she was like 
you know, she probably had a, a poster of Karl Marx in her room that she worshipped, right? It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I came through this whole thing of, like, anarcho-capitalism, libertarianism. Like, then I got into, like, the natural law stuff from Mark Passio. So I had this giant understanding, and I was like, there's no way I could say anything to her. But one day we're sitting around, and she was saying something about, uh, what did she say? I, she's like, oh, I can't wait for socialism to come in. And then I was like, I what? said, from, yeah, well, more of like a socialist, you know, like, <laughs> uh, everybody, you know, is equal, gets money, all this stuff. So I said to her, Fuck. I was like, well, you want to be a, you know, I'm like, you want to be a famous comedian, right? I'm like, well, what happens if you do that? What are you going to do with all your money? I said that to her in like a circle of like a bunch of comedians, <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah. And she's, she really like, to give her credit, she really took it seriously, <laughs> even though I was, you know, <laughs> in thought about it. <laughs> And she was like, I guess I'll just give it away, like, a lot to charity and stuff. And everybody around her was like, oh, yeah. And they were all like, this girl's full of shit. Like, they were just... And she was a nice lady. I'm not talking shit about her. But everybody knew. Once I said that, it was like I just defeated her whole ide ideology. But Because um, it's only, uh, like, it's only, like, that thick. You know, there's nothing to it. It's not even theirs. They're just adopting, adopting shit, adopting the programming. They're just downloading it whatever vibes with them they have so many um bullshit out there you know labels that they want to give themselves they got you know i'm a flat earther i'm a stoner i'm this i'm that there's democrats republicans they just want to label everybody and then someone wants to feel like they're a part of something she don't even know probably she hasn't even given even any thought obviously you're throwing at her something like that and you're not even being serious and she's you know dead serious about it but hurt <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because I don't even think she'd allowed herself to get uh, to get insulted because she was just so dead set that she was right that in her mind I was probably just some idiot, you know. But that's fine. Oh, like, yeah, I, yeah. It used to bother me, but now I realize it's a strength because now I'm like this, you know, like drunken master. Even though I wasn't drunk, like through the nobody takes me seriously. I'm like the fool, so I could like point out things, and everyone's like, "Aha, they're Brandon silly," you know. But they laugh, and uh, we talked about this on a recent show about I made a friend of mine laugh with something I said and he's like he's a J and it was a joke you know we, we called something the Holocaust I don't know if we could say that and he laughed and then he was like oh I'm offended and I'm like you fucking laugh dude I'm like get out of here so um yeah don't tell anybody I laughed though exactly you know but I'm just an idiot I don't know what I'm talking about but Mm -hmm. What you said is exactly right. We talked about this in episode 1111. And I'm going to let Sharon talk a little bit just about that because I've been talking a lot and everybody needs to hear her also. But Sharon, what do we talk about in 11 and 1111 that pertain to what he just said about the division and all that stuff? Well, we're, we just talk about how there's there's this discussion that happens that causes people to take a couple of sides. And so if you're on one side, then you're against the other side. If you're on the other side, you're against that side. And it, it's this like false dichotomy, um, false binary type thing that's going on. So we talked about that on that episode. Well, on two episodes, 11 and 11.11, because .11, we have crazy numbering systems. Not anymore. The, for the first 20 episodes. <laughs> Sharon used to hate it. She got, um, I used to number them really weird, like 2.22. And she's like, can, do we have to do that? And I'm like, listen, we need a little chaos, you know? We don't want to be like everybody else. But um, but yeah, that we talked about that. And we talked about how many divisions of uh, lines of division there are in society. You know, like you got sports teams, right? You got, uh, who do you work for? Like when I was in the Marine Corps, we're supposed to hate the people in the Navy. And I was on an aircraft carrier for six months. And let me tell you, I hung out with just, I don't care who they were, if they're in the Navy or the Marines, or like I was friends with guys that like uh, were marred. I worked on airplanes, but they have like a detachment of Marines because there's nuclear weapons on the sh on the ships. <laughs> I saw one too, and now I'm like, uh, ugh. anyway. So warhead, um, warhead. Uh, but there was Marines there with like shotguns to guard all that stuff, and like badass, they'd run through the halls and knock people over. And I made friends with some of those and the Navy guys. Like I'm just somebody to find the cool people. I don't really care like what your association is, but I've seen that I'm kind of rare. Most people like to box themselves and, and put labels and then, oh, you well, like that's man. what they want. You know, they want everyone. They don't care what side you pick. They just want you to participate. 
in the exactly. division, you know? Fucking like, I'm guilty of that, throwing the whole flat versus globe and doing all that kind of stuff. And I antagonize it because then I get stupid comments on my TikTok and I can respond with a video. It's like, yo, really? Like, let me get it's three a battery. minutes to, rip, you know? That's why they so, say rock the vote. They just want you to vote. Vote or die. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, it made me think about, because uh, where I bartend, there's a lot of retirement folk. And some of these uh, boomers will you know, claim they're like Republican or Democrat, well, not Democrat, you don't get much of that. But um, they say they're Republican right away. Like sometimes people don't even ask. It's like, what's, you know, people are just, and then when you think, I, I talk to some regulars I have who they're all about Trump. And I'm like, let's think about this, you know, because I know one of them's like 15 years retired and, you know, he shared a lot of his past and stuff. And then I'm like, what kind of morals do you share with any of these Republicans? Like, seriously, any of these people, you know, in these positions, you share no values or morals with these people and you're claiming you're one of them. Like, just because, <laughs> you know, and he really had nothing to say. He got triggered and, you know, he was on his third wine. So it didn't really work <laughs> out. How dare you? You ever, you ever talk to someone like that and they're on their third joint, the third third hit of their joint, and, and, they're, and they're like, you know, damn, damn it, it damn. you. Get, get like and you know, right. they never have. I'm angry no. shit. No, they don't care. They might be like, oh, I think I see your perspective. Oh, don't kill my buzz. Bro. Yeah. That's what I'll yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> they get dude, uh, uh somebody sent a a meme that was perfect to this and it said that Agent Smith from the Matrix was able to like go into different people, you know, like the agents were able to go into different people mm -hmm. and they equated that to when you start talking to somebody about something, they put up that wall and they just go into auto defense mode. And you know, you're talking to like the news or whatever it is. They're, they're like channeling a demon yeah. kind of in a way. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Agent that's, Smith. I, that's a great metaphor. That's why it's the such a metaphor. That whole thing. It's like a firewall. Yeah. Well, it's a great metaphor because the matrix you're in a computer simulation, but I think what's really going on is our brains are creating this. So it's like an inversion of what they're saying. So, it works the same way, the programming that you can program a person through uh, just ideology and then, you know, providing them with mass amounts of escapism, like pornos and like booze mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, and boner pills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blue chew. Exactly. Somebody <laughs> said they wanted to hear um, how Shannon uh, wants to hear how we, how we met got, and how we got yeah. started. Um. Really quick, just to touch on what we just said, the, the conclusion of all those episodes is basically we said that you should prioritize uh, what somebody's belief system is. Like, So if you can interact and be friends with people, I say as long as they can live by the golden rule, that's a really good start. You know, like they have some morality. And then if they think the Earth is – if they think we went to the moon, it's like, okay, that's cool, man. We can have a talk, but if they're not ready for it, I'm not there to woke rape them. I'll still like it's hard for me though, because right, I really exactly. like to talk about the meth head tree fort and all that stuff. You know, it's like that's a real <laughs> one. That and the JFK thing with Lem. I don't know if you know about that, but that's a real good starter one. I've yeah. If someone's interested, you're like, what was it? You think JFK was a homosexual? What's going on here? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. They they trip, man. Um, uh, I tell like I'm surrounded by boomers where I where my bar is and it's like <laughs> the shit I say like this guy's wearing an Einstein shirt and I'm like you know he married his cousin <laughs> and they're like completely like never heard of that before they're like really I'm like yeah dude absolutely he's not really smart he's propped up and they're like looking at me like I'm crazy they look at me like this where's this meme <laughs> right here I shared this one this looks like right here these are the faces i get i swear bro i seen this i was like oh my gosh this is what i get at work that's Talk hilarious about it that top left one is priceless <laughs> yeah yeah you tell them about that you start looking up listen i had at my job you could see the the launches from uh my job and some of them would come up and say like they'll pull me out to show me look 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 like because they know i think the earth is flat you know they think i'm crazy but it's cool. Like, it's no conflict. Everyone's cool. And, you know, for the most part, I mean, at least to my face, everyone respects me. Um, you know, it's not as taboo as it was. It's not like that anymore. It's actually uh, something that gets talked about a lot. I mean, within my life, 
amongst normies. I bring it up, sure, but you know, I've spoken to them to uh, fellow employees and uh, they end the conversation like it ends with, man, you really got me thinking about it. Oh man, yeah, got me thinking about it. Like, it's literally some of the responses I get. And then they'll come to me on the low key, like in the break room, they'll look around, be like, hey, good show last night. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shout out to them yeah. if they're listening now then. You guys are- Oh right. yeah, some of them became patrons. Yeah. <laughs> so sh- shout out. Teddy, that, Carla, much love. That's what I recommend. Make internet friends real. And that actually gets us yes. back to the story of how me and Sharon met. Um, so you want to tell it, Sharon? Basically, so my story, I just I started my own podcast. 2020 came. I started live streaming about the nonsense. Um, I had like all these internet famous doctors on, like Dr. Butar, um uh Mikovitz, that's I think her name, Cherry Tender. I was on the show. I was on your show. You were on the show. No, I'm talking the about famous like, doctor. You said pre- famous doctor. Famous alchemist. This is so pre Go real on. quick. No, uh, so uh, we had uh, we had Kaufman. I talked to Andy Kaufman and um, Ten Penny. Yeah, Ten Penny. Who's the other guy? There was a guy that was a straight. Well, Kaufman's a terrain guy, and this other guy too. That's all right. I'll think of his name. So anyway, and then I was terrain all day. Terrain all day, every day. Right, man. Uh, yeah, dude, it makes so much sense. And yeah. I started to make other... The invisible shows. rainbow. Yeah, dude, exactly. I was doing a, a tarot podcast called The Terrible Podcast, which if you want to get into tarot, we could talk about that later too. Um, it's tarotbull.com. It's a pun, everybody. Uh, so, so, and fast forward to like 2021, I, I did some podcast with other bears that I met some that I met at meetups and stuff put them up and I got on Bertaria times and Sharon commented on one and then she was checking out and then you could take the story from here Sharon so I had joined Bertaria in like late 2020 when it first opened up and I met some people and then like early 2021 like early to mid 2021 I came across one of Brandon's videos that he did with, uh, at the time, his name was Pasquale Bear. And they were talking about law. I know who that is, yeah. Okay. So they were talking about legal lawful stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, I mean, I'm kind of into that topic myself. So I commented on the video. Brandon commented back. And then I just friended him on Bertaria. And then we got to chatting and then it was just easier to go to telegram because most people were on there anyway for Owen's streams and stuff. Well, not for the streams, but like for the backup stuff and everything. So, um, I, we started chatting there and sometimes we'd have phone calls because Brandon knew about the tarot and stuff like that, which I was, I was starting to hear crow talk a lot about, and it's kind of interesting because Crow was talking about it back then a lot more than he does now. Like, I don't think I've heard him mention the tarot in a while, to be honest. But back then, I feel like he was talking about uh, meditations on the tarot book and stuff like that. And so I was wondering what that was all about. And Brandon clearly had like I had looked on his channel and he had other stuff as well as tarot. And so I started asking him tarot questions. And so one day, um, Brandon said, um, why don't you like, why don't you just do a show with me and ask me all these questions that you have about tarot? Um, and I specifically just had simple questions, basically like, why does crow, (laughs) my questions were like, why does Crow think that the devil card and the tower card and the whatever other card, why does he think they're evil cards and stuff? Um, and so Brandon's like, let's just do a show about it. And I was kind of hesitant, but I did it. It wasn't an over Sharon yet. It was just a one of Brandon's regular podcasts. And we did that. We, you know, we still were friends. We had, we were in groups together on Telegram. So we were uh, making more, more Bertarian friends, um, in group chats. And at one point 
Brandon and I were chatting and I would always ask him questions and we'd always be talking about really deep topics. And he would, he would be like, you know, we, we should record these or we should like, we should like do a show. Um, and then at one point, and I don't remember at which point, but he said something to the effect of like, um, like if we do this, like we'd really totally be oversharing. Like, and then he's like, we should call it oversharing. <laughs> like, I don't remember how it happened, but it was like, cause even before that he would jokingly say like, okay, I'm, I'm going to overshare right now or I'm oversharing. Um, so at some point it Perfect. became like, let's That's just like do a great show and talk about the things that we talk about all the time anyway on the phone and just make it a show. And so we did. He convinced me to do episode, the first one. He's like, don't worry if it, if it doesn't work out and it doesn't turn out, we won't publish it. We won't post it or whatever. And well, it was, it turned out okay. We posted episode zero, which Brandon called it episode zero. And, and then it, we went from there to random numbered episodes, like one and 1 1.1 to 2.2 2 and lots of other funny, funny ones like that. Yeah, you got great stuff. I went and listened to the one about, uh, well, of course, James. And then you guys went, did one about the occult. And you guys yeah. actually talked about all kinds of different stuff on that stream. Ooh, that was pretty that awesome. Yeah, it was thank great. You. Oh, that's thank you. Yeah, that's great. I was, uh, I love that episode because that was episode one, wasn't it? It was, a, I had to go, I had to go scroll for a while to get to it. <laughs> yeah, it was episode one or 1.1 1 .1, because we did one and then 1.1, 1 .1, we continued the discussion on the occult. The occult. Guys, I'm putting the links to, uh, the channel and I've been putting the links to more laws, more problems.com. Um, go check it out and give them a sub over on YouTube. Yeah. It's Brandon Bonanza on YouTube. So Brandon, just like my name and Bonanza, like that awesome show with, uh, back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. What's it, uh, Michael Landon? That's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the name I, cause I love puns anyway. And it also is like a slight warning to people that, you know, like, because when someone says they're about to overshare, people know it's going to kind of get serious or something. There's something up. You know what I mean? So that's why we say that we're oversharing because you don't have to listen to it. Just turn it off if you don't agree with it. But you might learn something. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Yeah. We we, we adopted that um, over here. We've already said it a couple of times because we get into a, to a lot of oversharing here on the Mellow Dome, <laughs> so um, it just comes up now, and now it just rolls off the tongue, and it just sounds like oversharing now every time, so you guys get a plug all the time, we're going to say it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's so important, too, uh, just the concept, um, you know, and, and it's simply because the world we're in, like, it's all about undersharing, so Facebook, uh, you know, you, you, you undershare, you, you, you're you're, you're censored. Real. Yeah, you censor yourself. You only show what you believe is the best aspects of you. And most people see through it and, you know, know your actual aspects. But but it's good in a time, you know, where we're starved for authenticity. It's important. It's important to overindulge in uh, real topics, you know, of interest. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's a great point, dude. Totally, man. That, and it, it's really good outlet for me. So now I don't have to go like tell people at the wedding Normies. about the PCR <laughs> test. You know what I mean? It's like now I'm just like, hey, check out it's my like, show. Yeah. You know, like, uh, it's a good outlet for me. So, yeah. 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 That's good reference. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I tell know. people to check out the show, too. And I recently got some bad Oh, we got our first negative feedback. This is hilarious. Sure, I'm telling. You tell it, Brandon. You tell it. Oh, nice. So Sharon was having a discussion with this lady, and um, she started to. What was she spiraling about? The world and like, oh, what are you gonna do if this she was, happens? She was a and prepper, right, she's this crazy prepper, and, and well, she follows, oh, I don't know that she's prepping is the problem. So yeah. it's like, oh well, she has that mentality, right? So she follows Owen Benjamin, so we know she at least 
has to get it on some level, but also she was spiraling in this group chat, I guess, about what are you doing to prepare? And like, you know, you better be getting ready and you're going to be sorry for not and all this stuff. And we come from a place of no fear, really. I think that the way this realm works, my humble opinion is if you don't have fear, there's going to be a way out, a bridge built for you. It's happened to me. I got sucked out into the ocean, into a riptide current on, off of uh, Ocean City, Maryland. And I was up to my feet because the water was really bad. No one was swimming. A wave just comes in. The sand under me disappears. I get sucked out. It was like a test. It was crazy. And at one point, I'm like, you know what? I, Because I'm a good swimmer, thank God. And I'm very tall. I'm like 6'5". So I was bouncing out. But once I started to go under before I hit... And then, the, you know, so then I couldn't do that really anymore. And then the waves were over my head. So it was it was pretty scary for a minute. And then I just told myself, well, if this is how I die, I guess this is how I die. And I just kind of treaded water and timed it. And I got water in my mouth and stuff. But I'm really, like, I've been swimming my whole life, so it doesn't even bother me. Like, uh, But I couldn't, you know, I started to get a little tired. And then all of a sudden, my feet just hit the ground. And I hit the sandbar, and I was able to walk in, like, I don't know, 100 yards. It was crazy. So... Looking back on that, I didn't think about that then, but looking back now, I feel like it's just because I didn't fear. So a way was provided out, you know, I'm like Moses parting the Red Sea, whatever, right? I parted, <laughs> I, but I put, I parted Ocean City uh, and now I got herpes now. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good joke for me. I should uh, write that one down. So, uh, yeah, so I, um, that's how I, we feel, right? So Sharon was trying to explain this to her about the no fear thing. And she's like, check out our show. And so Sharon sends her our show. And she she writes back like, oh, I, I can't stand this. What did she say? I don't remember exactly. Oh, it was so funny. It was, it was just like, it was like a, a mutual jack off or something like, I'm like, where did you get that lady? Or something. Yeah, like you guys are just, and I was like, dude, that's she said so it was boring and slow. And I'm like, yeah, I guess it's not for you, lady. But I'm because y'all y'all agree with each other. That's why it's a mutual <laughs> jack off session because y'all agree with each other. Because you're not like miserable fighting and arguing, right? right. And yelling and, and spiraling. And it's, you know, it's like people Bringing that the sky is falling and shit. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's what it is. It's faith over fear. It's like what you what you lend your time and energy to. People get disgusted a lot of the times at the opposite when you're talking good about yourself. If you want to talk shit about yourself all day, people laugh at self-deprecation and you know, they'll, you know, you can talk bad all day long, but as soon as you want to start talking good about yourself, you know, which, or have faith, you know, the, the positive negative polarity, if you're into the positive, the negative gets repulsed by it. It doesn't understand it. You know, and you know exactly. it's like a lot of people worry about all that negative stuff, but they're like karma, but there's also, uh, what is the positive Dharma? one? Bra Dharma, Brahma, Dharma. Dharma. There's another one where you do good things and good things happen to you because of you doing good things for others. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like concept. the opposite of karma. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's both ways for sure. Right. For sure. Yeah, when you break it down, when you're creating karma, you're off your path, and when you're on your, when you're doing your Dharma, which just means you're on your path, you're not creating any karma. You're just sailing the waves and this shit just kind of and it's i think it's Close like an in moment thing you know it's it's hard to do it all the time but you can get to that point point where you do it more and more in your life and it really is amazing because uh what i said to sharon was i'm like she's probably just jealous because she would like to have her own show or whatever it is right a form of expression i've seen this because i've done comedy so i i recognize this i'm not like just saying this because you know and so on some level, she's repressed and doesn't get this platform like we do. And she thinks we're wasting it with our <laughs> stupid ideas or whatever because we're because our points are so good that she has to demonize them or else what else are you going to do? Then you have to face that fact and you got to have a dark night of the soul and you got to like quit drinking. You know what I mean? So I'm not <laughs> saying she's drinking. I'm, I'm just saying in general, this is what we go through, right? So, uh, yeah. Likely. So I'm like, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's likely. That's all I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Go on. So it's like she's jealous in a way and she's hating on us because of that, because she wants it. But she doesn't realize all she has to do is start one. It's so freaking easy these days. It's just people don't want to do the work. They just want to bitch and point the finger and have three point back at them. Yeah, you, you can know? do so much better than go for it. Yeah. Link me your thing. 
You know, why are you wasting your time on things that you hate? People that hang out in chats that they that they express they hate what like, like yeah, it's just like that's that's cool and everything. I'm just I'm not that type of person. Yeah, it's so weird when people do that. It doesn't make any sense. And the thing is, it's a woman doing it. I expect sometimes when dudes do it because they usually tend to be the gammas and spiraling and stuff, right? But uh-huh, like, yeah, <laughs> this is a woman, and I'm just like, where did you come? From? Like, are you a fed or something? Like, what the hell? Fed. And yeah, well, gamma the- woman, same thing, really, in terms of like when they're in bitch attack mode, right? Like, <laughs> it's the same. It, it's you know, it's the same tactic of, you know, they don't play nice. Yeah, well, gamut right. is when a man acts like a female, so it's that. Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> there you there you go, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and, a, and an unhinged female, not like a healthy, sober Exactly, female. exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And I, I try to, that's why I try to encourage people, because I feel like I had this before I did comedy, and I would go to comedy shows, and I would sometimes see comedians that I didn't think were that funny, so I would be like, oh, they should say this or they should say that. It's like, no, motherfucker, you go up on that stage. And eventually I started to do that. And, dude, it was it was great. So anyway, that's why I encourage people to do it. And that's why I encourage Sharon. You know, I encourage my friend Ashley, who we do that terrible <laughs> podcast at terrible.com. Uh, another hilarious. You got to spell one. that. Uh, T-A-R-O-T-B-U-L-L. B-U-L-L. And that came from a joke I did. My friend gave me a spot. Hold on, the- say that again. I wasn't paying attention. No, no problem. <laughs> I was reading the chat. T A R O T. Like the tarot. Like tarot. tarot. Yeah. And then bull, B U L L dot com. Terrible like dot com, everybody. <laughs> that's my. Uh, cool. So, yeah, it was. Um, uh, that's what I do. I try to encourage people to express themselves in this format because I know how much fun it is for me. I mean, this is like awesome right now. I love this. Thank you guys so much. So no, thank you for yeah thanks dude, for thank you for on. coming on and saying yes man like oh totally you know, dude. Sharon you. and I were so excited trust me Sharon's like but she was nervous Good. I'm gonna oh sorry everybody yeah she was a little nervous I'm not as nervous but it's her first <laughs> time being live and I've done live before and you know uh, right. like I've just done it so much and that's what I tell people too it doesn't matter if you suck at it at first you're supposed to suck like when you first start doing comedy everybody sucks. And then you get better the more you do. It's about repetition, and I'm sure you guys can attest. And I think I still suck. I can't even go back and watch some of my streams. I'm like, ugh, how do people (laughs) watch me? How do people listen to me? You got to shut this up. Yeah, but you know what? All that doesn't matter because you're doing it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get, you know? And I've learned that uh, just being easy on myself. But one good way to do it is if you force yourself to go back and listen – you just write down all the times you like said a uh or an um or you have a word exactly. that's like a crutch word and then you I, just yeah. yes yeah that's why i go back and, and watch look for things you know and then i'm noticing my <clears throat> speech impediments and stuff i'm like wow you know it's things that you never really paid attention to until you, until you start doing this and you know you have a lot going on back here you know when you're yeah you got I have two chats. We're live on Rockfin and, and YouTube, you're live. By the way. And yeah. We're live, you know. So from Rockfin, right? <laughs> like the mainstream TV, they got whole production, a bunch of people behind the camera helping them. And then, yeah. you know, it's just one thing. But I wanted to say something. You reminded me because I remember when I asked James if he wanted to start doing the Melodome with me. And he was all like, What? For real? No way. I'm like, Yeah, wait, bro, what <laughs> you mean? I'm like, yeah, let's do this, you know? Because we met at Flattoberfest. It was awesome vibes and just seeing him with his family and he's like always having one of the kids on his hip and Aww. just they were just all about the family and running their stuff. It was just awesome. It was awesome vibes. And you know, it's all worked out, man. I love this shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you guys, this is great. I mean, Austin was like one of our best guests uh, as far as we had such a great time, first of all. And then second of all, so many people said that they hit us up and were like, it was such a great episode. Like so many people. And that it's probably. You our mean James. Time. You said Austin. Yeah, right? James. Oh, you mean James. I'm sorry. <laughs> Same thing. Oh, well, that's funny because we were talking about that before the show, with, like mixing up stuff. Right. See, I have it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a great show, though, man. You guys had. Yeah, James really like over sharing on everything. He he yeah. was breaking down all of his products. It was freaking awesome. I'm like, oh, this is a great show. Yeah, and I you guys went childhood. into uh, astrology. Yeah, you went to uh, some great conversations about childhood. It was just 
an all around great show, a stimulating conversation. And that's what I try to, um, that's my goal. Every time I go live is to try to do something that's stimulating because I mean, honestly, when I'm looking for the shows that I watch, that's what I want. I want to learn something. I don't want to sit there and waste my time at the same time. I want to enjoy myself, but I like something to be stimulating, you know, a conversation with depth in it, meaning, you know, and talk about with, real uh, shit. Yeah, yeah about you know, real things. Humor, humor is really important too when you're funny and joke around because mm -hmm. you leave that stress. You're not a fear porn guy or whatever. You know what I mean? You're making people laugh. I think that's right. really important. And we do we try to do that on the Sunday shows on the Awaken Bake. Try to set the tone for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, that's I'm all about just putting out the good vibes. And you know, we get into all kinds of things. We talk truth, right? As you guys do. Um, I want to get some of your guys' thoughts on the occult and stuff like that because I like your guys' aspect on it. You, it. We are very similar into a lot of people who are like, oh, that's evil stuff. Don't mess with it. it there's all kinds of things here that's a lot deeper to it. And I want to get you guys' take on it. But before we do that, let's take a break because I need to get some water. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I'm dry in the mouth. So let me do a quick shout out really quick to the people in the chat. I got to do it over here. For some reason, my chat isn't working. Uh, Flatman X, what's up, brother? Much love. He says, wake and bake show every Sunday. That's right. 9 a.m. Eastern. Check it out, guys. Me, James, Mike, and Chris. Awake and baked. Um, Tommy, tell the truth. Much love. Ben Brooks, good to see you. Lucas, much love. Crystal, how you doing? Shannon, welcome welcome big pine sailing good to see you what's up rethink namaste namaste he came here and he was gonna leave and then he's like nah i'm gonna stay never heard that oh that's genius you've yeah. never heard that one brandon i can't believe that i know you, you had to have heard that one i've, I've heard, heard that, that. I would have known because I wait. James, me and Brandon are, are from Connecticut. We haven't heard shit. Like that, that is yeah. so <laughs> funny. I love it. Yeah, people here. There's some funny people, but I, it's weird. But you know what? There's a lot of people. Well, I know. I know you want to go to break, so we could talk about it after. But there's just a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. people that see things around here, so it's it's good. Mm hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading at the same time. Doug, what's up, man? Good to see you. One Neo. Um, Scott, and now I'll go over here to the rock band. We got some people over here in rock band. Uh, what's up, Sarah G? Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, guys. Jameson, much love, brother. Mark, I'm sure you're over here, my guy. And Marky e. Rizzo, PSYOP within a PSYOP. Dean, much love. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We're going to take a quick break, um, and we'll come right back. Don't go anywhere. And I uh, hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves. I know I am. Um, I'm having a good time in the Mellow Dome. Where the best souls roam. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Peace and love. Peace and love. Don't you know talking about a revolution sounds Don't you know, oh, talking about a revolution sounds like a whisper while they're standing in the welfare lines, crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation, wasting time in the unemployment lines, sitting around waiting for a promotion. Don't you know? Talking about a revolution sounds like a whisper. Poor people gonna rise up and get what's theirs. Poor people gonna rise up and take their share. What was said about a run, run, run? Don't you know you better run, 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 Cause finally the tables are starting to turn 
Talking about a revolution, oh no Cause finally the tables are starting to turn Talking about a revolution, oh While they're standing in the welfare lines Crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation Wasting time in the unemployment lines Sitting around waiting for a promotion Don't you know, talking about a revolution Sound like a whisper Poor people gotta rise up Get what stairs Poor people gotta rise up and take their share. Don't you know you better run, 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 run. What we say you better run, 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 run. Cause finally the table. So starting to turn Talking about a revolution Oh no Cause finally the tables Are starting to turn Talking about a revolution Oh no Cause finally the tables Are starting to turn Talking about a revolution Oh no Talking about a revolution Oh no Talking about a revolution Oh alone. Yeah, that was Alex Michael, conspiracy music guru, crushing. The chameleon, Alex Michael. Yes, very talented man. He was also the that's he's also the one that sang the the new intro it's actually a old song been right. around for a while just a new video to it <laughs> yeah he made that for me a while ago he's awesome he's also a patron of the mellow dome oh wow that was a great song dude yeah he's amazing man i got another one for later for when we get up out of here oh, who knows if another we... one of his I like oh. his stuff i'm liking this conversation man it might go longer than two hours brother i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah man whatever um, dude uh, so the occult, man. Um, that yeah, the show you guys did that was a great show. Um, I don't know where you'd want to start with that. Um, I'd like to just get if you could yeah. share the audience is like your opinion on all that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, first I'll say um, this is what I tell people about tarot and the occult and all this information. It's if you're afraid of it, there might be a reason. So maybe you should stay away from it. I don't view this, there's things that people call magic and dark magic and ways to like control people's minds, like all these things. I didn't look into that for that. I didn't look into any of this for that. I came at it as I was a history nerd. I started learning about the real history, you know, which is probably not even the truth either, but it's closer. And I started to see how systems of control gained uh, sway over people and how they did it with a tactic called mind control and everybody pretty much knows this now but this is something i learned from mark passio is that government means mind control govern it comes from gubernar like gubernar means to control mente's mind so it, it literally means mind control and so that blew my mind and i started to no pun intended or whatever so i started <laughs> to look into symbolism because i saw that symbolism was the way that a lot of this stuff was communicated. And there was this whole other language in the world that was symbolism. Buildings, you see, there's like stuff written, you know, car emblems, soda, uh, all these products, right? They have like Lay's potato chips. There's a sun there in the background. There's a reason, you know? So I started to learn about all this and I was, I felt like I was just, uh, arming myself like know thy enemy kind of thing but also i found there's positive aspects to this because a symbol just like the occult just like tarot is a tool just like a gun or a hammer so it's more know thy frenemy if you will yeah yeah, yeah that too right 
And I always tell people it's like a tool. You're so stupid. <laughs> you know, you could with a gun, you could uh, uh, you could do a lot of things, right? You could rob somebody, or you could defend yourself with a hammer. Same thing, right? Yeah, like a knife. Yeah. You can spread butter on toast, or you yeah. can. And you can you also know. hurt yourself too. That's another thing Stab that people your think about, ex's right? new boyfriend in the heart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You do a lot of different things. Yeah, uh, totally. exactly. Or you could fly to the moon. Uh, so I found that it's, the, the word occult just means hidden. A lot of people know that now. It comes from occultare. It's this Latin. That's where the Latin different uh, uh, entomology of the word. That's what I was looking Etymology. for. Etymology. Etymology. Thank you, Sharon. The grammar Nazi. Can we say that? Yes. Uh, YouTube. No, just... grammar queen. So they, grammar. they don't get they don't they won't strike us. Grammar Nazi. Uh, Astrology so... is a tool, though. You can figure out like we um you can learn about eating habits for your child you know what i mean um with it or you can like plan the most opportune date to do a sacrifice you know yeah yeah dude exactly so i started to incorporate this and that led me to the tarot because of the symbolism and i just dove in head deep you know i'm a single guy i had to overcome these terrible intimacy issues that i used to have i was like you know uh Kind of like how Owen explains, if you're a fan of him, similar lifestyle, just like, but I wasn't a famous comedian, you know. But uh, so I was alone a lot, and I decided I was realized I was an introvert, so I started to feel really comfortable. So I would still hang out with friends and stuff and work, you know, DJing and stuff. But I would, a lot of my time, I would just devote to this like all day, you know, like just listening to podcasts, reading stuff. So I felt like Neo in the Matrix when he got that download, you know, and. What we, what we always say to people is Sharon and I are blessed with these lives where we can look into this and devote a lot of time into these topics and just study them for like days and like, you know, binge watch stuff or read stuff. And a lot of people can't. So we kind of aggregate that information down to people and we get it from people who are like one step ahead of us, like cr content creators. A lot of times, you know, they could kind of simplify with all these German philosophers were saying in the 1800s, so we don't have to read all these books, but they could translate that idea to us and transmit it. And then we could break it down further for people who have less time to look into these things. So that's what we do on the Oversharing Show. But that's kind of what I was doing with this, right? I was diving in, in head deep and I got into tarot and I just started to realize that it's a tool. You can use it to deceive people. I saw that and that's why I didn't like it when I was younger because I saw these fortune tellers just kept getting people to come back to him like you know like a like a psychiatrist or whatever or uh, you know like they're not gonna if they're depending on you to keep coming to him they're not gonna actually heal you even if it's subconscious you know i'm not trying to like call people out but anyway same thing with tarot mm -hmm. but i also realized i can use it to heal myself and then i could show other people how to do it for themselves so i don't i'm not doing it for them they're healing themselves we've talked about this recently in a bunch of episodes like we're not healers you're healing yourself. We just healed, and now we're like a beacon for you so we could show you. You know, there's no we're, – we're not, like, healing anybody, right? So – or same thing with these ideas. We're kind of just distilling them down, or, and we're pointing the way for people uh, in a lot of ways. But we don't really make a lot of questions – or we don't make a lot of claims. We're really just asking questions also. So uh, – but, yeah, so back to the occult. Um, I found out that's all it means. It means hidden. And then when you first find that out, you think it's by the Illuminati, right? You're like, these people are, how dare they hide all this information? But I found the deeper I went in and the more I even healed myself, I realized that most people, it's right in front of their face. Just like Bill Cooper, the guy who wrote Behold the Pale White Horse, he said, when you're talking to your neighbor and you're trying to tell him about these conspiracies and he's like, there's no conspiracies, he goes, your neighbor is right because they're doing it out in the open and there are no conspiracies. So he might not get it all. But he's right. So same idea. It's right in front of everybody's face and they just refuse to see it. So then you have to ask yourself, who's hiding what from who? Right. Are these people hiding this stuff from themselves so they can go engage in escapism and not to be judgmental, but right. So they could go off and just do all this stuff, booze, pornos, you know, Buicks, all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, and then neglect and pass down this trauma to their children also because of the way they're treating them and all this stuff. And again, you know, these aren't judgments. It's just we're all doing our best, right? 
observations. That, yeah, that's what I saw a lot of. So um, growing up anyway, but uh, what was I saying? I kind of got, oh no. Okay. So I remember. Yeah. So I was just, uh, no, I think I did lose what I was saying. Sharon, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, you were studying the occult and uh, people like we aggregate information you're talking about how the tarot cards were healing you. Uh, yeah. Or you're finding a way for it to be in your bed. I remember what I was saying. Okay. So society, they're basically the ones hiding it. They're occulting it from themselves. So when you realize that, then you realize that most people are the source of their own problems. And there's two kinds of people, the people that realize yeah. that and try to work on it and heal it. And the people that say, no, it's everyone else's fault. Right. And so, yeah that's uh that's what i found with this word occult right and i also found that you could use it in a way to like either manipulate people or you can use it in a way to manifest things like our friend joe that was on the show he Episode was 25 yeah that's a really good one too that has a lot of views and that one blew a lot of people's minds and one thing that he did because he studied this stuff earlier than me he dove in head first he was from new york city he had a crazy crazy upbringings that was like a biker and all this stuff right he talks about this and then uh then he goes into the army and then he went to germany and uh also afghanistan so he saw some stuff and then he just stayed in germany and the dude just dove into like conspiracies and then the occult and he got to a point where he can manifest things where he basically like pictured this house on a you know like on a on mountain a hill on a hill <laughs> near like a lake or like a river or waterfall or something and his girlfriend called him and like, oh, we got this new place. And they went and it was like what he manifested for. You know, he did like a ritual or whatever. And but the thing is, he went through all that and he realized that's not it either. It's more about raising your consciousness. And he had this transcendental crazy experience that a lot of people talk about where he was one with everybody. You know, he like attained this state that Dr. David R. Hawkins talks about. And he said that was really one of the only guys that understood that stuff. So he got really into just raising his consciousness and, you know, kind of looking into gravy and stuff, but more about uh, just how we can raise it. And it's really, I mean, A, it was a great episode, but I feel that's the same thing with the occult. You know, it's it's a tool, but I say it's best to use on yourself, to heal yourself. I think that and this isn't mine. I don't. I didn't make this up. I got this from other people. This guy, Michael Tessarion, he thinks that numerology, astrology, the tarot, and Kabbalah used to be all one thing, and it people lived in this like golden age, right? And they used these to have a great society. And something happened, and a lot of people agree with this. Just they just say it in different ways, right? Something happened, and the human psyche got split. And now it's like a dark age, but we're, you know, not to be whatever, we're crawling our way out. And I think it's awesome that we live in this age because we're like sneaky ninjas, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of how I feel. Like I try to imagine it, uh, like that, but so after the split, everything went different and now people try to like scheme and plot and like trick people and they use this stuff, this science or whatever it is to do that or a way of living. And it was split up and it was just given to different people. And we see how that might have been an ancient form of like splitting up people to get them to divide. Right. You know, like, oh, you guys are the chosen ones. You're the Jews. And oh, you guys are the Philistines or whatever. So then you could yeah. create empires and you can uh, profit off that. Right. That's the trick as old as time. So anyway, I find that if you're serious about it and you really want to heal yourself, it's a great tool. And all of these concepts, even like the devil and death, they're not what you think. We've been told a bedtime story. We've been told because we're peasants, right? You got to think about this. If you're going to have a class of controllers and you're going to like control people. And let me tell you, I think it's all consent based. So I'm not even blaming the people at the top, right? Maybe there are some people even argue and say they're doing a good thing because people are so freaking crazy, right? I don't know, right? I don't yeah. know. Things. But anyway, so people are crazy, dude. Like they're employed testers, like they're the realm testers, you know, that are employed, yeah. you know, they're working for, they just have a very specific role that's very different than ours.
developers. You know, I don't think they're benevolent like people working on behalf of the creator, but and not not knowingly, but well, you know. they could be oh. thinking. <laughs> Brandon, go ahead. <laughs> Just unknowingly. You want to say something, Sharon? No, I feel like you could say it better. All right, all right. You're making me steal the show. Um, I think there's this school of thought, and this is going to kind of jump over <laughs> talking about the occult, but I guess everybody gets the idea for what I'm saying, right? Um, unless you have any questions you want to ask me up till now, and then we, I, cause trust me, I know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> if a card fell out while I was goes where it flows, brother. goes where it do flows. Do you want me to? Do you want me to show the card? Yeah. What card is it? Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about this crazy theory, and I'll get. Where's my allegedly hat? I'm the enjoying the shit out of this, man. Of thank wands. you guys for being here, seriously, and all of you here on Rockfin and YouTube. Thank you. Three of Wands, huh? Oh, that's a good one. I don't see. Oh, hang on. I know what I'll do. Which one is that? What is that? <laughs> three it's of Wands. Three of Wands. Maybe you should pull a card from the Crowley deck. <laughs> oh well. Uh, I'll do that next. Um, real quick, let me plug this now that I just remembered. Yeah. Um, so we, we got the merch store back up. Um, sending some, some shirts out tomorrow morning. Uh, let me bring up the screen really quick. So yeah, you go to Melodome.live and you'll find the link for the merch store and they'll take you to here. Um, I said I had seven or eight different styles. I actually have nine. So, um, a bunch of cool styles right here. Is it up? Yeah, it's up. Okay. Let me full screen it. Yeah. So $25 plus shipping and handling. Um, made here at the house by my wife. She presses them, prints them, ships them. Um, and yeah, they're great quality shirts. Go check them out. Um, also at Melodone.live, there's a link to become a official patron of the show i'm going to be doing some patron only streams coming up soon so if you want to be a part of that or even just support the show there's many other ways to support the show you can super chat you can um rockfin tips uh you i have uh the paypal zell and cash app that i had up so and also let me bring this up very quickly kaylee's a fucking thug yo and for those of you that weren't influenced by late 90s, early 2000s, BET culture, that's a compliment. <laughs> Yikes. Right, She's crushing, other? dude. Kaylee's crushing. Those t-shirts, fucking awesome. We're going to have custom ones at Flattoberfest. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're like living the dream. I love it, man. It's oh my god, dude. I'm definitely living the dream. So you Austin, are. I think it too. I can't speak for Austin, but I'll I'll just say no, that yeah, I'm living the dream right now, bro. I love my life. Hell uh, yeah. About myself. I got a beautiful family. Oh yeah, you know, dude. Totally. Everything's yeah. great. Homeschool. So this was us this morning. Yeah, you know. dude. Well, so the past two days. Cute. Look at that. New haircuts. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, well, one of them, the oldest, got it. He wanted it, and then the baby the like, wanted, wanted it. Yeah, yeah, and it was just a domino effect. Yep, they couldn't get me to do it. I ain't doing that shit. Uh, uh-uh, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> don't care, don't care. But yeah, you know, I love my life. Life That's is great. Uh, got compared to where life. I was five years ago. Oh, what? Yeah. Yes, you talk what? about a huge. You, you talk about transmutation. What yo? But you're smoking you weed, not... but you're smoking weed. And it's oh, like yeah. I love you, the phrase, you have no like idea. Like if, if you knew me and you. You're smoking crystal meth and shooting heroin, like you, like <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea. They have no, no idea. idea. Sorry, Sharon. What were you saying? What oh, I just saying? said I like his. Yeah, I like Austin's I like braids. Braids. They don't ever yeah, stay Austin. in long. I always his got French braids. Braid. My wife did it. Um, shout out to the wife. She'd be crushing, holding it down for the Melodone family. Straight up. She's the rock in this house. She's crushing. Straight up. That's what I'm Y'all are the rock. Y'all are the rock. Y'all together. I forgot what I else I wanted together. to say. There was something else I wanted to talk about, but I absolutely forgot. But yeah, anyways, Melodome.live, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. That's why I wanted to plug really quick. Sorry, James. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good, um, bro. The snail mail game, P.O. Box 293, Oxford, Florida, 34484. 
All right, I'm done shilling for myself. Lots now. of fours, buddy. Dude, yeah. send it. Oh, relax. If Austin. you can hear my voice, send Austin a fucking letter or package. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. You lazy piece of crap. No. I keep going and checking in. Nothing's ever there. Yeah. How dare you? This guy, listen, he gets that some mail. junk mail. It's gonna make his freaking day. You don't understand, guys. Trust me. Man, if I had I some love when I get mail from yeah. people. What are you guys it's waiting awesome. for? Send them physical. It's all about the physical. Cause let me tell you. <laughs> This internet, it not, it's not it as the physical. It, yeah, it's mm -hmm. you know, who knows? It could go down. I've kept like, everything that that people has sent me. Like, you know, it's awesome. And the letters I've gotten have, uh, some of them freaking made me cry. You know? I put them on my fridge. With the yeah, phone. straight up. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Very grateful. Sorry if you can hear that racket in my background. It's my sugar gliders back corner oh nice oh those things that's are cool yeah austin's slinging them now i'm petting my yeah. cat <laughs> kaylee is not me oh right 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 <laughs> but yeah um before i derailed the whole show we were getting into uh what were we getting into you were about to hop into something else right after the occult stuff you said Brandon you was talking, into some yeah. good stuff and i said you know the show goes where it flows you know this is a great time i'm enjoying myself uh yeah it looks like the chat is enjoying themselves you know chat's crushing great vibes in here much love, love. you guys uh but well yeah. what i was gonna jump into was this whole idea <laughs> of uh this is something i learned from james true he would say a lot of these controllers well first of all let's back up There's a lot of different people who don't agree with each other on a lot of things but they've studied a lot and they're really smart and they study this these controllers and they feel like there's more than one group so they're not there they might fight amongst each other too but then it's kind of like you ever see the movie trading places where they make a, a dollar bet you know <laughs> it's kind of like that so but there is some underhandedness like game of thrones kind of stuff i think also an element to it maybe not so much murdering but then who knows right i'm not gonna make claims but because of this, some people have proposed that there's one side that's actually on our side, and they're just like a, this is what James True would say, a group of merry pranksters. And they're basically pulling off a lot of psyops, and a lot of it's fake, but they're trying to wake people up because they realize, this is something I've learned about Aleister Crowley, which is really kind of mind-blowing. The first thing, everybody thinks he's the devil, and I'm not saying he was a good guy or a bad guy. I think he was like an in the middle guy. And one thing you really need to know about him is he was like against the Jays, you know, not all of God's chosen people, you know, the grabblers, just the grabblers, not all of those people. Cause there's a lot of good people. I don't care how people, like we said earlier with the, you know, what did the Jays ever do to you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but there's an element of people who identify as, as them. And, uh, Alistair Crowley used to call them out and what I, that kind of was like I that kind of blew my mind when I heard that and then I also heard he was really slandered in his day by the press because of stuff like that so I think he was in the good old boy club with them dude he, okay <laughs> we gotta tread lightly but I totally know what you're saying I, I used to think that too like that like like Al Capone and shit I'm like these dudes were probably fucking fucking saints dude because yeah. immediately, like, oh, he died from syphilis. What a piece of shit. Like, and, like, right, he right. Going, he was bootlegging <laughs> while they were trying to make alcohol illegal. Like, dude, I totally agree with you. Sorry. <laughs> In that same way, he was just kind of like, so he started to point this stuff out, and then they started to demonize him. And people say, oh, you know, like a lot of people started NASA, used to hang out with him, and they got these ideas about mind control, like Werner von Braun and walt disney and they used it in disney and like you know he was responsible for that and then i was like well what if he was hanging out with them and then he started to point this out so then they ostracized him and started to demonize him because the church hates him once you start getting demonized too you can you can see how that shit would happen if you've experienced it in your own life you're like oh especially if, if you've experienced that with a corporation or a job <laughs> like yeah, yeah, exactly. And listen, I'm not saying that I'm like a cult follower of Alistair Crowd. Like you could no, call no, we're not saying. Yeah, not I at all. actually don't believe with 
what I am about to explain, which I think is his was his point of view, which is that he thought of these three different ages, and one of the ages was an age of chaos that had to happen before we could get to the golden age. So I'm kind of picking up an echo. Yeah, I heard that too. Huh? Mic check. Mic check. Hello. Hello. I have headphones on. So. I was just muted, so it's not me. Where's so then it might be me. Where's the um? Can you turn down your speakers? Yeah. Oh, I don't hear it now. Yeah, we're good now. We're good. Okay. So so basically, <clears throat> what if he was just demonized and? You know, because all the rag newspaper who were owned by the Jays or whatever, right? They were attacking him and all this stuff. And so what I'm saying is, oh, this is what I was saying. So he felt if he can usher in this age of chaos, what if he thought that maybe he can bring the golden age faster? So he adopted this idea of... So he was the Zionist. ...trolling people. Right. Not, well, I don't think he was, because he definitely... Uh, wasn't like for all that stuff that was going. No, on. I was just kidding. I just mean like bringing on uh, the end of the uh, the end of the world by yeah, yeah, trying exactly. to bring the savior back by creating chaos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, Wait, go on, go on. Similar, it's very similar. So, um, but I thought I think he also left a really good set of tools for people to use, and if they use it in their correct, I got the echo again. Sorry, I think it's. My bad. Well, I think it's Brandon's mic. You're you're going in and out again to me, at least. I didn't hear you twice. Huh? You said you didn't hear me twice. No, I'm hearing an echo from from you. Yeah, I can hear me. Hold on. How do I mute this thing? Let me see if I can mute. There's a Sorry mic for interrupting. The bottom left, no. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> mic check. Mic check. That's what I, I hear it now. Live, you know. Yeah, live, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear it now. Is she muted? Oh, she's Sorry. getting okay. It's probably Sharon. We're we're old. You gotta you know you gotta put up with us. We're old and deaf. <laughs> I know I'm old anyway. She's not old. She's timeless. Um, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> shy. I, I like the headphones. I break them or lose them every time I get them. These are like old DJ headphones that I used to use, but I got a better or a newer pair. So I just use them for this. They're really comfortable. They have mm. like belt. I got Dollar General mm. headphones right now. Oh, dude. Okay. Is there an echo now? I win. Hello. I win. No, I think Any we're... echo? No, nope. you... no it's we're good. Good now? Good now? Mm hmm. Good. I, well, I guess I wear headphones today. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. that's kind of how I like to look at the controllers, right? Sometimes it's like maybe in their own way, they believe that they're doing good. And if they're actually following the golden rule, they're just in their mind, they're just using their tricks to make people do stuff, but they're in the, in their own way, they're really trying to wake people up. You know, they do all these psyops, but they leave clues like Seven Eleven was an inside job. There's that whole building number seven. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. like I just heard Owen Benjamin say, he's like, He's like, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani was the mayor of New, New York. He's like, he knew that Building 7 fell right away. He's like, a lot of people didn't know. He's like, Rudy Giuliani, he knows. So he's like, he either was in on it or just that freaking, you know, stupid. Like, it's so funny. He's like, it could be either of those. Uh, I, I, I tend to think now, like, then you would think he was in on it. But now I tend to think he's just yeah. a useful idiot, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, watching that, the... I don't know if you caught the video of his like hair melting down his face. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. It's they like, they bro, promote these people so they, they can do the shit behind the scenes. And then everyone's like, oh, it's Rudy Giuliani's fault. Like, like uh, totally, dude. Totally. He's like a conduit of people's uh anger, right? It's a way, it's a way to focus energy. You're focusing on a person. It's magic, guys. It's the occult. But the thing is, when you realize it, <laughs> you don't have to let it bother you because you see it's a spell and you could then again use it which i recommend internally am i good oh no 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 I, yeah i was pointing at sarah's comment oh, oh cool <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sarah flashed it real quick um yeah oh spicy sarah so yeah i think that that's how i can view it and the one thing about it is maybe i'm wrong but at least i'm not a victim now i see it as all oh, those crazy bastards you know and what i say to people especially if you're a christian 
or you believe in that, uh, or you follow the path of Christ, as Christ was getting, as he was dying, because he was nailed to a cross, you know, if you're into that whole thing, uh, he said, forgive them, Father, for they not, for they know not what they do. And Christ said, we will go on to do equal and greater things than him. So if he could do it, we can do it. And the thing is, though, you're really doing, and this is the secret, you're just letting go of that victimhood. They're still, they could still be terrible pieces of shit, but they aren't, they're not renting space in your head. It doesn't matter anymore. You just let it go because it's all just a show. All the world is a show, you know? Yeah. And you know, you, you start absorbing that stuff. You start emitting those same, you know, that kind of energy, you know, and, uh, you don't want to poison that well that you have you know what i mean with all that stuff you don't need that you know there's a there's a certain time where you're getting information but then it becomes like uh you know fear type of shit like a rush and that shit you don't even need and then you realize it's kind of you know freaking you out like i went through a richie from boston phase and every time you watched his video it's like the world's gonna end and everyone's a fucking idiot you know um, he used to drive me freaking insane. I can't stand I, him. I, I couldn't right? okay. watch him. See, Could but then not. I would say to like my friend, um, you know, I don't know. It's just like the fear porn thing. And he'd be like, yeah, but that's why you should watch Richie from Boston. Exactly that. Because he's he's not about fear porn. He's about hope. And I was like, are we watching the same Richie <laughs> yeah, from Boston? Yeah, who are you watching, bro? Like, yeah. What? Did you ever see that yeah. clip? Where they're left coming to get you. They're coming to fuck your kids. They're coming to, like, that's. Shut up, dude. <laughs> How many times did he show a video of, like, tanks on the trains? They're coming in any day. Tanks Peeking on out trains. his window like a crackhead filming. The, they're, they're, they're climbing up my fucking, my pole, the pole, and they're installing. It's like, they do that shit in front of my house, too, but, you know. You know what, though? He was making they a do lot that of shit. doing it, man. He was like a fucking clown, you know? He was technically like a comedian, but do you ever see the... Uh... He had track marks all over his hands oh, like yeah, one year when he was doing it. So I think he started doing it with, like, you'll do anything to get money, like, to to support your habit. I could totally see, like, a, a real savvy, like, junkie dude, like, trying to get money by, like, doing, like, conspiracy videos online. I, I It's a good call. If you're, if, you know, if you're looking for, if you're in that world. Yeah, people are. I don't are know what I'm talking about. Really. Was Alex Jones <laughs> like that? Like, yeah, fear. Porn? I never really watched him like that. Yeah, he would always scream. Right, I don't like being yelled at into that in that way. Exactly. I about do. about yeah. Be afraid. They're kind but of info wars order. like uh, Greg Reese. He puts out little good mini little documentaries, but you know. Um, see now a lot of that stuff is important information, but you know, to some people, but I digress. Right. I was but on I that conspiracy stuff very, very early. And there was some really good, like I was onto the moon landing in like 2001. And there were some really good clips that you cannot find anymore about how freaking insanely fake it was. Allegedly. Um, I got my allegedly hat on everyone. Uh, yes. so yeah, dude, it was crazy. And I came across this clip of Alex Jones in like 2006 and he was at a protest, but he was, like, screaming for the other side. It was really crazy. Like, it was a clear... I forget exactly what the instance was. I mean, it was 2006, but it was a clear indication of him being a shill, you know? And so ever since then, I was just totally suspicious of him. You know, I never... I was like, they're turning the frogs gay. I always kind of <laughs> looked at him like a, you know... Because I was into him, and I saw him, like, going to Bohemian Grove and all this stuff, you know? And then I saw this video, and I'm like, oh, of course he got into Bohemian Grove. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you really think that dude got in there by himself? Like, get out of here! He comes from high level masons, like his dad and his grandma and all, grandfather and all that. And like, but again, I think well he connected. is a useful idiot. Useful idiot. You know yes. I mean? like, <laughs> yes. Well, yes. he he's like okay. I'll break it down like this. I used to work at car dealerships. I sold cars, and I was this whole like my whole town. Well, most of it like has Route One going through it, and it's a main four lane street. You know. And there's car dealerships all up and down. You're it. basically Alex Stein on the East Coast or in Connecticut. I'm basically Awesome Austin in South Carolina. Now. South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, we have like very similar scripts. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go on, go on. You get it. 
So I was in at a time where a lot of the dads who started these dealerships had children who were taking them over or either in control of them. And I witnessed, because I worked out a lot of them, some of them were like, they just had all this money because their dad owned a car dealership and they partied and they were useless, right? And what I think happens is in these elite quote unquote families, they get kids that are just total fucking screw ups because they just party, whatever it is. So you get a degenerate like Alex Jones, but you still have a job for him. <laughs> you know, like the guys at the car dealerships, they're like total screw ups, but they still had a job for him to do. You know what I mean? Like they were drinking alcohol. They're like 50 and they're like, but they still had a job to do, you know? So yeah. I think that's what Alex Jones is. <laughs> Yeah, and everyone needs a purpose, you know, and a lot of people's purpose are bullshit. You know, just a lot of people don't have a spotlight. So they got and a lot of people's purpose Earth are bullshit, recently. but they don't start out that way. Oh, what yeah. What saying, Austin? Oh, oh, sorry, James. <clears throat> What's that? My bad, I didn't mean to step on you right there. Um, no, it's all good, dude. But they got him uh, talking some flat earth recently on a couple. Streams. Alex Jones? He goes back yeah. and forth. Yeah, but just like him addressing it, and then you got Greg Reese making a nice video on it, talking about yeah. Antarctica and all that shit. Yeah, the InfoWars guy. Um, well, because they have but, to, it's supply and demand. Once the tipping point happens, then they don't want to be the who says this. They don't want to be the the last one. Do you say that? Yeah, you know what? There's a you lot of podcasts last. now that they're like realizing we need to talk about Flat Earth for an episode. It's like... It's becoming that way, you know. Um, yeah, you know Shaquille O'Neal was just on another yeah. podcast talking about flat earth. Oh, yeah. That was recent, I thought that was like a long time ago. He just ago. did it again, he just did it again. He was telling them that he flew 20 miles in, or 20 hours in a plane and it was flat and level the whole time. He's like, it was straight the whole time. He's like, I'm not going under anything. <laughs> and he changed his profile picture to him as a gorilla playing basketball. Dude, that's freaking <laughs> hilarious. But still, Shaquille O'Neal talking about flat earth. How many people are going to see that? And then what does that spark? And then how many of them? How many of those uh, people have like TikTok and then type in hashtag flat earth, which has 1.6 billion hits? It's like crazy. It's not as taboo as it was at all. Oh man, it's wild. TikTok like YouTube where if you type flat earth in a video comes up that says gravity, flat earth debunked. No, hell no, bro. There's oh, like wow. an army cool. of flat earthers on there, man. Like it's yeah, there wild. is on YouTube though too, but when you search it, it's no, you, you just type in stuff. hashtag flat earth, they'll give you all of it. Oh, okay, cool. All of That's it. Live debates and everything. You know what? Um, I've noticed a pattern. And this is something I could maybe uh, shed some light on this. It's because I've noticed, because I've been into this quote unquote conspiracy stuff for a long time. Like I read A Pale White Horse or Behold a Pale Horse like in the early 2000s. And I just got in and out of it because of my addiction to women. You know, when I got into DJing, I kind of got out of it more, but I would still look into it and then I got back into it. But what I noticed is anyway, there's this cycle that happens. Like I learned about. 7-Eleven was an inside job in like 2000. Part-time job. Part-time job. You know, uh, like, you, remember, you know, the Lord of the Rings, my favorite episodes, the two towers. You guys get it. Um, we, I was onto that in like 2006 and I noticed that more people started to get onto it later. And then I was onto some other stuff and then people got onto it. And then I got onto even like stop eating wheat, you know, or a lot of grains and, uh, kind of like intermittent fasting and then other people started doing it. So I just realized I was like an early adopter and I could see things coming. And so you guys are just early adopters with what this realm is. But I think that there is a psyop element involved to this. Um, so I think flat, not that I believe we live on a spinning ball, but I think flat earth itself, the way it's portrayed in the mainstream flat earth the people that really don't talk to other people or whatever, I think that's kind of a psyop because I believe, I believe we live in a spiritual realm. And I think the important distinction, which it doesn't matter at all, because I don't care what you think about any of this, right? I, but just because we're over sharing, right? Yeah, man. I this think, is great, by the way, <laughs> I think that it's still a physical, they, they still have you trapped in this idea of materialism. Because not you guys, I'm not speaking for you guys, but a lot of people think it's still this physical thing with a physical dome. And I think that it's an internal experience. It's more like some kind of spiritual experience that I can't quite explain. I just leave it as a mystery because I learned 
when I'm not supposed to understand something, then I just let it go. And it's just a mystery and I could ponder about it and I could guess and make, you know, it's like a fun pastime, but I can't have a dogmatic approach to it. I just said, okay, it's a mystery. So I think that the way we experience this. Oh, I resonate with that so much <laughs> right now, bro. I'm mean, getting like food bump. So bro. I think because people are figuring out, once enough people figure out we don't live on a spinning ball, it's going to happen. So there's some kind of damage control so you can at least keep people as materialists, right? Yeah. yeah their whole goal is to make, they're, like, they're always trying to make the metaphysical physical. Uh, they're trying to keep us in this physical material realm. Like, if you can't quantify it and, and see it and all that, then it's not real. It can't be, you know? You know why? Um, and they have why? to give you two options so that you can pick one or the other. Right. There's exactly. no in between with them. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Brandon. It's because, could it be that's how you keep a good slave? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if you realize that this is a spiritual realm and you could do whatever you want, and it's really about just having no fear and then putting action behind your thoughts of something, so you can use this magic of manifestation, but like in a positive way, and you're sticking with the golden rule. This is one thing that I heard that's really important in this positive stuff. And you're just, but it's because. Like we were saying earlier, you do, you're doing your dharma. So you're not trying to like manifest all this money or hose in your life or whatever, um, which you could do. I've seen it. It's crazy. But you are just living here as what you think God wants you to do, you know, and you're happy. And that's the point, I think, is you're happy. Bingo, man. You're making kids that are happy and they're going to heal the next generation. And all these people who are dying now because they're scared and they took all these experimental medical serums and they're leaving this realm. Well, they're not going anywhere, right? Come on. They're immortal. So I believe they're just getting put back into these children who are then up. Uh, they're given a much better life. It's going to be a better time for them now. They had their life. The last one was a rough one. They grew up with parents who were crazy and, you know, all this stuff. But now these kids who are the souls of the people who just departed, in my humble opinion, allegedly, are now experiencing this loving, beautiful life. And now they're going to be able to pass that on. And that is going to change the world. And I think people know that. I think that this, uh, all this 2030 and all this crap that they talk about, the uh, you know, the World Economic Forum and all this stuff, I think that's just, uh, it's like a um, misdirection. They're trying to get people to remain in fear because of it. Because I think they realize that's not what's happening because if people like us are getting onto this and able to have this conversation, that means in a few years, other people are going to be able to have it. We're just farther up the steps or whatever. Right. And it doesn't mean we're better. You know, it just means we're onto our higher level of consciousness, which I believe we're all here to do to raise our consciousness. And then ahead of the curve, ahead of the curve. And no then pun intended, pun intended. We're going to be there. <laughs> I really believe we're going to be like the elders of the society to tell people, listen, don't go kill all those people because of, you know, their J's or whatever. No, it's not that like put down your, you know, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a huge swing and shift in the other direction. Be able to grow on. Uh, yeah. And not that the world's going to become like perfect or whatever. Cause I don't, I believe it already is perfect. Honestly, it's everyone's learning their lessons, but I think it's just going to be a better age and we're going to get to see that. So could it be? You know, I resonate with a lot of that. But then, you know, I think about like the whole reincarnation getting filtered back in here. Um, and I just can't help but think that that's like, that just sounds like a nightmare. Like <laughs> to just be filtered back in and forget the whole life and oh, brought yeah. back in here and not even, it's just like, wow. You I know, think because Karma... that's, I, that's kind of the questions I have. Like when we go, whatever is after this, how much of because how much is my physical and metaphysical like what am i leaving behind what am i taking with me will i remember my children my wife and all that stuff you know or will i not will i not even be austin austin was the name given to me when i was brought into this place it's not me you know like it's who am i too. you know what i'm saying like what am i about you know yeah this is our vessel in this realm this is how we you know, I have a very right strong feeling that we're going to know exactly who the fuck we are when we go to go to where we're going next. And, and we're going to be like, 
extremely comfortable and secure. And this is just my hunch for the people that walk the path. Um, you know, yeah. I, I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be great if, if, it, and that's, that's the level of, you know, in terms of karma or Dharma, I think it's important to you know, people are like karma from past life. Like, uh, no, you know, people will be like, okay, then I'll do shit. And sick people will be like, I'll do shit in this life. Cause fuck it. I'll deal with it in another life. Like, I, I think that's almost a side up. Like, know that you will reap what you sow in this life, good or bad, you know, and not in your own time, but that can and will happen in this life. So, you know, be careful and have faith in that too, that you're not just dealing with some shit because you did something wrong, but you don't know what you did and you just have to deal with it. Like that's, that has a, a, a tinge of psyopiness right. to it. Yeah. You know? Mine, mine isn't even like that now because I don't necessarily believe that there is a place like hell, like the way they describe it with some red no. demon and fire no, everywhere. No. Um, but my thing is like, okay, it's so we will be nothing. at peace in this next life. Right. So in order well, for me to be at peace, I would have to not know my children are still here in this other place because I would not be at peace if I was still conscious of all of those things. But that's yeah, your, but, but that's if, your ego, man. That's your man that exists now. And right, when you're, exactly. Is it or is it not like you're a you know they're being. safe no matter what happens here because this is just a place where you're coming for school or whatever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You, you you'll, be, <laughs> you'll be just waiting for them on the other. Like you'll, pro yeah. I think you'll be excited. I I do feel like there are spectators. That these are the questions I have. Like, all of these things, <laughs> so, you know. So like, where are are all of? These I want to see my dad, know, dude. Aren't here I, I know I'm yes. going to. Like there's I, so I, many I, I souls that are gone throughout yeah. history. Where are all I want of to see my these best souls? Are they being? Are they here still, just in another vessel, or is there a whole other place where these souls go to? You know, it's my yeah. best friend and my dad died. And I'm gonna, I, I, love, can, I know that I that they're. I can feel it. Yeah. So I didn't something... mean to like ramble off on that. It's just that's coming from a real genuine place. These yeah. are all I got, cool. I got something for yeah. it. it's gonna like, blow your mind, but Sharon, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I I was gonna say that um not to make claims or anything, but some of the things that Brandon and I have been looking into, one of them is called the law of one, and it's also called the raw material, like R A, uh, as in the sun god Ra. Um, but it is a channeled work. And I don't know if you guys know what that means, but it it's basically uh, someone was a medium for that information to come through from the other side. Um, but these the the other side that was speaking was a, a benevolent um, collective of beings. And what they brought through all this information, um, and this was in done in the 80s, and what they brought through, got published into books and um you can you can read them um but i've brandon and i were doing a uh uh kind of like a going through of the uh kind of a summary of what that's all about in uh a playlist by aaron abke um the youtube channel aaron abke and the law of one essentially is talking about how we're living in various densities over time. And so you have you have 1D, which is like the the four elements, water, air, earth, fire, etc. And and like rocks, for example. So rocks do like quartz, it actually is basically a clock. That's why they put it in watches and silicon devices and computers, right? It's it is alive. It does. It does resonate, right? It has a frequency. Yeah, it has a crystal. vibration. It's a crystal. Mm -hmm. So um, the next density is two D, and that would be animals and I think plants, if I'm not mistaken. And so they're a step above the, you know, water and the rocks and stuff, and they have this m like more of an ability to kind of be 
aware of things, but they're not necessarily self-aware. And then you have you have us, you have the, the living beings, you and me, living men and women, and we're 3D, you know, that's what this density is called, 3D. So according to Ra, according to the law of one, this 3D existence is, it's a temporary existence for all our souls, are all our uh, like broken up pieces. Basically, if I'm not mistaken, the law of one says that we are like God getting to know itself. So it's like God breaking itself up into billions of pieces and experiencing itself. Because how would God know what it is? How would God know itself if it, if it didn't experience all of this? So you have, you know, you have people who can choose to do something positive or something negative. And that's another thing that they talk about for third density is that there's this, you were talking about, Austin, you were talking about forgetting every time you come back. Well, that's called the veil of forgetfulness. So when you, you come back, you forget, but it's not like you, you, you really forgot because it's just in this density that you're forgetting. So when you get to like fifth or sixth density and on and on, uh, you'll, you'll remember every, you'll remember everything. But for now in third density, your memories are blocked from, mem from previous lifetimes, et cetera. So there's also this ability to choose to polarize positive or to polarize negative. And polarizing positive is when you, uh, it's like the path of Christ, right? It's like living for others. It's, it's uh, uh, Brandon, what do they call it? The service to, service to others path. Whereas when you're polarizing negative, you're on the service to self and you're fulfilling all your desires and you're, and it's very yep. selfish, self-oriented yep. versus you've grown, you've healed all those wounds and now you just want to help others. Yeah. Right. It's two different paths. But healed people heal people. And yeah. Hurt people hurt people. <laughs> yeah. So this um this explanation, and, and that's I'm stopping at third density, but it goes on like fourth density is the density of love. So if we can get to a place where and in this in this 3D like this being that we are, this physical meat suit, if we can get to the place where we can get to 40, which is love, and that love is service to others, then we start to be able to, um, we get, we can get to a place where we're like, if we're in 5D or 60, which is, we become light beings where we don't have a physical body, we're, we're, we're beings of light. And in those densities, we are learning other things. Now, I don't remember all the details, but in fifth and sixth density, we are beings of light. And in those densities, we're if we polarized positive and we're on a path of service to others, then we are um, we can share all our memories with that collective of the people who polarized positive. So we can share all our memories we can, it's like telepathy. Um, so we can, we can do that. And then like raw was like a on the cloud, put it up onto the cloud. Exactly. Exactly. And they can come back and channel to others, or they can choose like one, one of them can choose to come back and, and live a life that is on a path of service to to others, of course, they, if they choose to come back to 3D, they will, they choose to go through the veil of forgetfulness and, and find their way. And, and they may or may not find their way, right? They may find a way into polarizing negative or something, right? And there's but, many stories of babies, you know, yes, <clears throat> like young ch child children having these memories of this, the life before, like, uh, 
there's a story of a little girl had um, remembered that before she was born, God told her that uh, your parents already lost your sister and she's here with us. So I'm giving them you. And then when she was like a few years old, they never told her and she told them that. And they, you know, lost a baby through miscarriage before they had her and stuff. And there's all kinds of stories of them having these memories of past life in a different time. And it's pretty wild. And I yeah. guess as you get older and you start um, losing your childlike self, you just forget things. You forget. You something else, you know. Yeah, they say up to the age of about seven is when children are still open to that. And you can like you can probably try to talk to them and see if there's anything that they can tell you. I mean, you know, not not pulling it out of them, but just letting them speak and letting them tell you about mm -hmm. what they what they see, what they remember, if they remember anything, you know, did if they remember when they were because there there are people who remember things about being in their mother's womb, about something that someone told them when like I saw this one video, this one girl, it was just amazing. She remembers being told before she went into the womb that, OK, I'm sending you here and, and given details about things and remembering that the kindness of, the, you know, that someone told her that this is, you're going to be sent here. This is going to be your mom. And this is going to happen to you one day and, and blah, blah, blah. So she remembered those things later on. Um, and she would try to tell her mom as she was growing up, all these, th all these details that she remembered. So. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. What were you going to uh, say, Brandon? You said you uh, had something that was going to yeah, be mind blowing. Um, I even wrote down notes. Look at Ooh, me. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, first, I have this written. This is an old note, but I'm going to read it because I think it's funny. I want to refer to myself as a heathen, not a hippie. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's a shirt I was thinking about making, something like that, or like make it a quick joke. But anyway, uh, what if so? What if after. What about a heathen hippie? Yeah. A hippie he heathen. A hippie heathen. Can you be that? Brennan was saying, like, the people that heathen, don't like not hippie. hippie. I don't like heathens. But, yeah, I know. but it still throws people off. And I'm like, people are like, what's the difference? I'm like, I might shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Hey. There you go. Accurate. Probably not. The chances are really low, but I might. You never know. Uh, Namaste, bitches. <laughs> nah, I'm going to stay here. Nah, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, I like it. So funny. That's true. Um, so what I was saying earlier, what if when you, after you die, so this is, a, it's an occult thing again. Also, I've seen this painting, but there's a giant eight up in the middle. And on one side, there's an angel and the way the eight's portrayed, it's like, there's two portals coming out of each hole. And out of one of the portals where the angel is this young, beautiful angel, there's like babies. And then they show there's like a baby and then a toddler, then a, you know, then, a, um, a little like a boy and then men and then it went around to a circle and then it was old men and then the dying ones that were skeletons were kind of going into that other eight all the way around and there was a grim reaper like figure there and what that i think represents is the eight which is also an infinity symbol it's called the lemma scott or lemma skate um i think part of what is trying to symbolize is that there's two doors death and birth but on the other side there is something there so i think it's like a cycle so I believe mm -hmm. after you die, I could put it this way. You ever see Rick and Morty when they play, what's that game, Ray or whatever? They wake up and they're like, oh, my God, you had him off the chart. You ever watch that yeah. show? Yeah, I watch that show. You wake up and it's like a video game, but I'm not saying it's a simulation or video game, but this is just an analogy, right? It's so, our terms that we know how to describe it. Exactly. You wake <laughs> up and you're like, oh, shit, you know, and then you're like, oh, I was just in this game now therefore my kids who are in there still oh they're just in there learning stuff so this is the point of view that you have right so you're not worried about them because you have no fear and you came through the other side with no fear which is important because i do believe there's two different ways you can go if you go through with fear i'm not saying you're going to go to hell or anything but i think it's just a different experience but if you go through without fear um i think that you're shown things and you're taught things and then your conscious is elevated and then you can go on 
and you're given this life where you could keep going upwards, right? And it plays into the karma and the dharma thing. So that's what I believe. And then after that time, which we live inside space and time right now, well, space, whatever the heck, whatever the heck that is, right, everyone? <laughs> and gravity. Yeah. But space no, so we live in this illusion of time. But I think after we go through the other side, there is no time the same way. So we can have this maybe other lifetime. Who even knows? Like you were talking about your in your aboga trips on our check out our over Sharon episode that he was on. What number was it, Sharon? 20, 24. 23. 24. Michael Sorry. Jordan. There you go. So, yeah. So I think that that might be the perspective. And then we get put back in here and maybe we're told things. And then when we're kids, that's the best words that we learn to put onto it. God told us, you know, because how else does a child know what to communicate that would mean? You know what I mean? Like it was this other being on the other side. So, um, yeah. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'm just, you know, we're oversharing here. But I think that's how I look at it. And that I break down through symbolism and through all these different ideas I've heard and even incorporating the great stuff that Sharon was talking about, the law of one, which I think is really cool. Um, and I think that maybe children are more in touch with that collectiveness and not in a bad way, not like collectivism or whatever, but that collective conscious. So because they haven't formed the self yet, I, there was a great comment. I forgot who said it, but they said the self uh, that goes away in a child when the self is formed around like four or five, or maybe it's close yeah. to seven or whatever in that range. I kind of remember it happening actually. So Misty Bear. I think it's because you form this ego because of everything that happens to us. And it's like walls that we kind of put up. It's like, but it's not, it's a tool again, right? It's a tool. We just, we're stuck in this ego mode. And this is something that helped me with like meditation. I'm sure a lot of people understand what I'm talking about, but I think that it forms in society naturally. Well, not naturally, but it's the product of our society to raise children this way. And so, but I feel the good thing is once you start to heal it, I think you start to raise your consciousness and not in the same way like we were talking about in the law one where you're ascending to the next level, but maybe it's like a echo of it where now the rest of your life you're kind of in tune because I know like I've been having some crazy experiences with telepathy lately and it's because I always thought telepathy was like, ah, I do this and James knows like, oh, send me a peanut butter sandwich, but it's not words. It's not, you know. It's emotion and feelings and just these yeah. Fun. And I had my friend vibration. Wait, what do you mean? Are you picking up on us? Get. So you can pick up on other people's feelings yeah. and emotions. I'll yeah. tell you a crazy story. Something that just happened. So I have a friend, Kaylee, who I've actually done videos for and you can go to more laws, more problems. I mean, done with, um, she's a Brit that lives in Australia. Very interesting life. She has a son there and she's a single mom, but she was into like Mark Patsio. That's how I met her. And she's, solid like she never wore a mask over in australia she was going to like demonstrations in the beginning when she thought it would actually help you know really good really good person and uh so where was i going with this oh man i got side oh your story the story that where you um you like mentally had a connection where you the oh, yeah, yeah. okay the yeah, telepathy was, thing really yeah She's so wonderful that i got like sidetracked <laughs> anyway so so we were exchanging, we, we still, we haven't recorded recently, but we'll still keep in contact. And she always hits me up whenever the fear porn's getting crazy. And she's like, what do you think? You think that, and I'm like, no, nah, they can't do this. And we've been consistently right. And now I'm explaining to her, you just don't have fear and a way will be provided, you know, and she's really digging on it. So anyway, out of nowhere, I get this feeling because she's mentioned this <clears throat> roommate that she has that's kind of new and he's a guy. So out of nowhere, I had this feeling like this guy was into her or something for some reason, right? It was just this intuitional thing. And then she hits me up and just tells me some stuff that kind of confirmed it. But out of nowhere, after I had the thought, 10 minutes later, she sends me this thing like, I have to ask you something silly about dudes, you know? And like, a, tell me a story. And so I don't want to share personal information. But anyway, so uh, I could see how I was like dead on with that. And it was so crazy. And it happens to Sharon and I all the time. But it's just like a feeling, like a gut something. And then you're like, oh, maybe I'll call Sharon or, you know, maybe this. And then she's like, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, it's it's really interesting how it works. Because again, it's not words that you're speaking. Maybe it's just the synchronicities lining up. It's part of that. Yeah. And 
in the episode we had with Michelle, what was that? 26? 26, 26. Yep. Um, we, we talked about how when we went to Sedona and I was going up with her to Sedona, I, she's deathly afraid of, well, I mean, not deathly, but she's pretty afraid of heights. And so we're going over, you know, I'm, I'm the one who's, uh, steering, driving. <laughs> I'm try. I'm traveling. Yeah. I mean, I'll say driving fine. Yeah, traveling. That's right. <laughs> she knows all the right words. I love it. Um, so I'm the one steering and we're on our way and I'm usually just really speedy, really like, boom, you know, just boom, 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 get there. Like not worried about stuff. And all of a sudden I feel myself slowing down around curves and around, cause she was telling me, oh, like, oh, the heights and oh, we're getting close to a cliff. But mentally I wasn't thinking anything to myself. Like I was like, I'm just going to do my thing. I'm going to drive. Like I don't, you know, not that I don't care about her. It's just that that's what I was just mentally thinking I was going to do. I was just going to do my thing. And she kept telling me, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You, you, you can, you know, drive however you want to drive. So, but I just felt myself slowing down. And I said to her, this is unlike me. This is kind of weird, but I'm slowing down. I don't know why. And she's like, are you picking up my energy? And I'm like, is that what I'm doing? <laughs> Because I like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done that. Like I would have just kept going, but somehow I just instinctively, intuitionally, like my body wouldn't let me go faster in the car because I was picking up her energy. I don't know, it was so weird. I'd never noticed anything like that before. Um, that I would that I could do that. And I guess I mean we all can to some level. We just have to be aware of it. The and, correlation uh, of you hitting the brakes eased probably was easing that her her biofield every time you were hitting the brakes, and yeah. you were probably subconsciously registering that, and 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 you know wanting to nurture her and keep you know her safe, being she's you know in your car, and you know yeah. Yeah, and I didn't do it mentally, like I said. I, I did it like instinctually and yeah. intuitionally, like you're in the flow. Yeah, this natural reaction. Yeah, yep, picking up on the vibes for sure. Totally, for sure. I so, love that stuff. That's kind of like telepathy, yeah. like to and the me. more and you know that, the more it'll happen. The more, the more once you you become aware, that, yeah, dude, and and the power and of it, and prayer, and the power of having faith in your belief, prayer and having a yes. Knowing, that your prayer <laughs> is already answered because you're doing it because yeah. you're praying for it. And, and, you know, you're not going to pray for anything that you shouldn't be praying for. So you don't right. have to wonder if it'll be answered. So when yeah. you get on that level, when you get in that mode, uh, life becomes like talking you're, about being like a video game, you know, you're living in accordance yeah, with, yeah. with nature. And yeah, we're going to talk about it in a upcoming episode. And not for yourself. Like, like you weeks. were saying, Sharon, the desire, you know, that's the opposite of living, you know, in service, you know, to others. Yeah. Versus yeah. To service others. To self. Yep. And um, being in the flow and everything is not living for yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's when you start helping others, you find that flow, you know, you, well, you got to find your purpose and, 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 you know, how that translates into helping others. There's a million different ways that can be the case. Yeah. And something else that is all like related to that we talked about was um, Reiki and like you talk about prayer, yeah. but there's other things like intention and like sending someone good intentions. And like when well, you say I'm sending you good yeah. vibes and stuff like that. Right. It's, it's all in your intention, but, and, and reading, um, Aline McCusick's tuning the human biofield. I don't have the book in front of me, but I have her tuning fork here. Um, it's all vibration. It's all. And then it's in the way she talks about it in the book. It's like, there is no space and time with ether with, uh, with all of this, because that's why Reiki and like distance healing actually works because you can 
you can like you can wish something for someone and make an a intention, a good intention for healing. And I don't, I've not studied Reiki myself, so I don't know exactly how it works, but it's essentially, I'm assuming it's essentially like a, a sensing of where that person is and listening, maybe intuitionally listening to your body, to what happens. And that itself is like, that itself is energy and like, but like that person could be like 300 miles away, it could be 2000 miles away. And you still can have that feedback, that biofeedback in your own body say, and, and just be like, well, when you, when I was going through your field here, you know, my throat, my throat got all like choked up. So what's that all about? You know? And that happened to me today because I went for my first biofield tuning session today. It was crazy. Nice. So, yeah, um, she she told me she's like, whoa, this is really heavy. Like I'm feeling a lot of stuff in the throat chakra. Um, really interesting stuff. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I love that stuff. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. I've watched a few videos on it and then I bought the sonic slider. Ooh. Yeah. You know, and I use that whenever I get headaches or, you know. I want to get a 440 sonic slider and, and use it, have it as like a weapon in case someone breaks in. <laughs> <laughs> get the nice. brown noise, <clears throat> the brown noise one so they shit their pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to clean that up. <laughs> get out of my house. Oh, yeah, no. That's the humor. No, for thanks. Everybody. Uh, yeah, so. Um, I got some cards here we can maybe talk about if you want really quickly. Yeah. Uh, so I pulled a card too for later. The cards that are demonized are like the devil and death. And so and the tower maybe. Yeah, the tower also. But this is the death card, and this is the uh, druid craft tarot. There we go. Yeah, it's a little better. So we see it's a like an old lady holding a skull with a little sickle over a cauldron with the birds in the sky it's turning dark you know so the death really esoterically just represents any end of something it's just an end of a cycle and it could be a human life or it could just be a habit or addiction and it's entering like i said before that portal of the eight and it's a death and on the other side you're a different person because it's just smaller cycles within larger cycles right it's just all the stuff's kind of repeating itself yeah, it's an archetype that applies to everyone at some point in your life. Exactly. So this or could multiple represent right. the end of something, right? And then it's you not have... a fortune telling or divination. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's an archetypal, uh, generic scenario that every single person will find themselves can relate to. Yes, at one point in their life. Yes. Yes. And you're, you're, exactly. a, you're a liar if you if if you de de deny you know, that. If you can't observe that. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that one day uh, it was explained that the tarot was a book, especially the major arcana, which are the big ones, the trumps. And it was a book, one that was like kind of smuggled out of the Library of Alexandria because they pictographed, pictographed it and disguised it as a game or whatever. But the information in here is like, like I said, it's a very powerful tool. And yeah, it could be evil. Obviously, like a gun could be evil in the wrong hands, right? But anyway, so you have the devil. This is, in this card, Sir Nunes. He represents, he's like a pagan uh, guy in pagan lore. He represents uh, the spirit of, the uh, like, the forest, but more of, like, the death kind of, uh, he's coming to get you, like, the Grim Reaper. So what this means is it's really just, like, an enslavement. And if you see here, you have the two people sleeping, that just means they're sleeping their life away. And the way it's portrayed in the rider weight, there's a devil on a pulpit, and there's two people in front of them. They have chains around them. But if you look closely, the chains are really loose around their neck, which symbolizes that it's a voluntary slavery. And they're blaming the devil for their slavery. They're like, look at what am I going to do? You know, like the guy's like pointing back, looking at the devil, like, what am I going to do? I got this devil, my monkey on my back. I got to I gotta be a shithead or whatever, you know? And uh, that's the archetype that's portrayed, I think, in the devil. And it's not 
pointing to the Lord of the Underworld and like devil worship or anything. It's just another aspect of nature when people are enslaved to their own addictions or their own forms of escapism or whatever it is. They're a slave, and then other people realize this, and they make them their slave. As above, so below. If you're a slave to yourself in that way, or a slave to like a substance or a, a video game, whatever it is, you are a slave, and then somebody else is going to benefit from that. As above, so below. Now you're technically their slave. And then if you're free, people above you, I think, will benefit also. I think there's benevolent forces here. You know that are looking to raise the consciousness so yeah oh yeah i tend to think that too um you know i have Good. a lot of thoughts obviously on all of these this has been great that, what, was, what were you gonna say james well back to the desire thing that sharon was saying earlier that you know uh your own desires that's 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 what you're up against you, you're you're up against dysfunction trying to creep into your life which should be function you know, so that's it's an archetype, you know, and a lot of the times what I've heard people describe uh, it'll come up when, um, you know, if if someone got a reading about a job or something that they're, they want to leave and that's one of the cards that comes up, that's that's going to be an implication that, yes, like your job is going to end, you know, that's you know, that's so that that's, you know. It can it can be in, on a on a mundane level as well, like in a in not as spiritually um, deep. Although I like the spiritually deep ones better, the best. Yeah, it could just be you know the end of whatever something silly. It could be basic. Yeah, it could just be your daily chores and routines and stuff <laughs> like that. You know. Yeah, and now it manifests in different way. You got to look for it. Yeah, dude, you you really do. And once you start to, you really start to figure it out and heal yourself. And what I could say is that's just two archetypes out of 22 of the major arcana. And I gave you a brief description. Now, just imagine all the other cycles of life when you're in it, when you're, you know, when, when it's going well, when it's not going well. They're just these cycles, right? And then it's on you to, to decide how you're going to view that. You're going to say, well, am I here to learn because I like Fortune St. Germain on Crow Triple Seven said, yeah. you can learn one of two ways, either through uh, suffering or through joy. And if you can start to get that mindset when you're learning through joy, I feel like the tarot is a good tool to do that because you could observe the cycles, kind of like astrology is. You start to realize it's all about patterns. But then when you transcend that, they don't affect you anymore because you're looking at it from a different thing. And it's nothing more than opening your worldview is really all I'm talking about your aperture shifts and yeah and that's all biblical when you attain that that uh level do everything without do everything without cr uh grumbling or complaining so you remain blameless before yeah that's that's a, that's you know that that, that becomes like it's super attainable yeah it's very po it's a very powerful statement and it can also be misconstrued by the people who are slaves because then that just allows them to justify their slavery they're like oh. yeah 100 percent, dude see that's and that's the tool <laughs> aspect of it it can the polarity of which way you can use things yeah. you know like man yeah 100 percent, dude that's when you get into like religion and stuff and like organized religion i feel like it's just because i could say that and then say pull your mask up you know what i mean yeah <laughs> <No complaint. laughs> exactly sorry go on Oh, I was just saying it's another form of collectivism at the end yes. of the day. And I really feel it's like an individual thing. But maybe that's just my truth because I'm an introvert and so you know, this is how I look at it. Maybe that's just works what works for me. If something else works for somebody and they're living in accordance with natural law or the golden rule or God's law, awesome. I'm happy about it. You know what I mean? But I just had questions like a smart ass and it just led me to all this other stuff, right? And this yeah. belief system. So True. Uh, Same, man. I, I, you know, you hear about things, you look into, you have questions, you keep asking, like, you know, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know at the end of the day. And I, I think all of this is fascinating, just gaining all of this uh, knowledge. You know, again, how do we apply it to our life? You know, how do we use it to better ourselves? Um, you know, it's all about self, like an understanding, you know. And, you know, real quick, back to, um, 
we were talking about, you know, getting filtered back in and stuff like that and experiencing, you know, and being one and all that. Um, you know, for me, again, I don't know, right? So I, I won't, like, sit here and pro proclaim to somebody, like, one... Uh, not saying like anybody did that, you know, I'm just saying I can't sit here and say I know something for sure because I don't. I do have all these questions about it, right? About where do we go? What is this place? Who are we? What's all this about? You know, um, but that being said, I think that it's all about, you know, establishing that, you know, you're living this life right now. Try to live the best life you can, you know, like right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh present yeah. moment do what you you know love do what makes you happy you know that's where i'm at you know so. yeah 100 percent um myself james did you want to talk up you want to bring that up the let's bring this up i say do what you know you should be doing true but if you don't know what you should be doing then you should figure that shit you out. You know, James you in the or Jameson in the Rockfin chat said he he thinks that uh, following the gut, your gut feeling is like a connection from like a higher power. Let me get the exact words. I feel those gut feelings are something very important. Communicating info from a higher power. Intuition. Yes. It's your higher self telling you something. Right. Mm -hmm. it knows. Absolutely. And, and that's why it's like, go ahead. I was just going to say going within. And like when Jesus talked about like, go into your closet and like pray, that's what he was talking about. Like your closet, <laughs> go inside, go within. True. True. I like that. Yeah, man. That, I, that's what it's all about. You know, figuring yourself out. You know, uh, because we'll never have it figured out on those type of questions on what's next, you know. So um, right. but I do think it's fascinating and it's way better than the alternative that I was taught that I was taught that, <laughs> you know, there is dinosaurs here that got wiped <laughs> out by a rock. And, you know, we're on a speck on a speck in a never expanding vacuum, you know, and you were, we're space monkeys. And, mm -hmm. ain't, you know, all of this is better than that, you know. <laughs> how dare you sir i'm definitely space monkey how dare you <laughs> we want brandon to don't you know but don't you know yes brandon. i was gonna say do you want to bring up what you've been um reading about uh cards on houses by michael tosarion yeah I can... tying it tying it into astrology yeah so um the way michael tosarion does it he has this whole different system and he takes the cards of the major arcana and he'll place them on different astrologer, uh, astrological houses that you have. And he uses a little bit of different system. He uses like the, uh, tropical system, but he accounts for the spin. So there's a really easy way to find your sun sign in this. And it's just his form. He's not saying that you have different sun sign or whatever. He's just like, this is my patented method. Right. And it's really cool because you can look at your behavior in another way um, and in a different light. And it's you learn a lot of stuff that you might not. But what happens is on all your different houses, you get a card and you put it on there. And then there's the card kind of explains the archetype of your sun sign and your rising sign and your moon sign. And we talked about this with Davin recently on an episode. And he talked about how the sun sign... Is how you are when the sun's out, right? And you're doing your job, and you're, and then the moon is how you are when the moon's out. You're more kind of by yourself, and it's like a way you interact, and it's when you're being intimate or whatever. And then the rising sign is how did he explain that, Sharon? Do you remember? Um, I'm not exactly. I feel like it was like more like how people see you or something like that. How you're perce perceived by the world, typically. Yeah, but, but it's the first perception they see of you, typically. Yeah, yeah. The so first one. That's well, see, it. I like I said a few minutes ago. You know, I could pick up on people's like aura or energy and stuff. You know, you can get the vibe on something oh, yeah. quick. I can, and then you know, James did the 
that chart for me and it says i was uh um pisces moon which is the greatest has the greatest sensitivity and perceptiveness of mm -hmm. their surroundings <laughs> yeah mm, wow yeah there's a lot of wild stuff yeah, yeah you know, pisces moon is legit knowledge you know like the more you learn about yourself the more you can let go because you realize this, these are just your tendencies and it doesn't excuse any bad behavior. You can now work on it, but you just right. let go of all this. Oh, I shouldn't be this way. It's like, no, well, this is how I am. And we just got to work around it. It and confirms things. Eh? A lot of times too, like you go through your whole life telling yourself, I'm not that way that I obviously am. But once it's confirmed, you're like, oh, fuck, you know, and then you got to you got to address it. So work it out. Confirm your shit. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, dude, you, you need it going up to your shit. Seriously, dude, like it, it, it will uh, blow your mind how how and then you, you stop hating yourself, too, for a lot of things. You know, there, there's uh, there's a lot of things they keep from you because uh, the tool of um uh self-acceptance you know like self-hatred is such a great tool and like so necessary for them to continue so many of their scams it keeps you know them. yeah so they keep it from us because <laughs> you learn to accept who you are sorry yeah. 100 percent, man um, yeah when you go within and you and you heal a lot of those things a lot of those wounds that are rooted in some of those things astrologically sometimes um and from your childhood uh, you learn to love yourself first and that's the path to learning to love others you can't love others until you love yourself it's like putting the mask on a, on you know yourself first and then your baby when you're on the plane because that's I don't just... know. I'm I'm like split. I've always been split about that. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it on an episode, yeah. Brandon. You gotta heal yourself before you can heal others. Because I think part of that understanding is to realize that you really can't heal others. You can only assist people in their own healing. And I think that type of insight is what you get when you heal yourself first. And that's very important because it it uh, lessens the. Uh, chances that you're going to get into this relationship with somebody that's like a parasitic one and you can be psychically vampirizing people and not even realizing it it's crazy hmm. uh, but anyway yeah that's why i always talk about uh healing yourself first and all that stuff go heal yourself bro yeah uh, exactly <laughs> yeah what was i gonna talk about what it looks like you when were... pharma is watching you heal yourself <laughs> with products like from grounded extract <laughs> Like. Sure, is that your mom? <laughs> she got a fucking yeah, I snipe. Said I she said. Like a snipe. Well, that's the going joke because everybody asks Sharon if she's like uh, Laotian or Vietnamese, but she's Mexican mostly and like, you know. Uh... Colombian. Oh, yeah, Colombian and native. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> but everybody thinks well not everybody but a lot of people ask her, are you from laos or Cambodia? no they asked me from asian or you know Brandon, like whatever oh, like, she's mexican yeah Filipino. <laughs> she's colombia she's a well <laughs> no she's both though right i'm half oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, i'm a half okay. i'm a half coffee half pinto bean y'all she lives off street corner <laughs> interesting story about her parents so you can go and check that out on our show too man her parents had like her dad was a singer and a band and all this stuff yeah Mary, yeah yeah my yeah, parents used to sing on um mexican radio and colombian radio no and TV. way mm -hmm. yeah dude i love that coco is my nice. favorite movie yo i was just about to say <laughs> i was just about to bring up coco I'm i don't think i watched i don't know if i watched all of it i think i oh, saw pieces man. of it man you gotta go watch it Okay. My baby oh, loves Coco, man. He'll like little guitar. And <laughs> my, my boys love it too. Oh my god, Aww. dude, it's the best. They, they did the best job and the least amount of like, like trash weirdness and propaganda in it. Yeah, yes. and, and, and all Pixar movies isn't is Coco, is and they did the best job on it. Like, wow, it's got a great moral, great story, and then people are like, yeah, it's about dead people. Like, just. And the Day of the Dead is an awesome 
Yeah, it's, these it's, are it's, those are great all... concept. If you can just suspend, pretend that you were born and and you've never been exposed to anything, and you were just seeing Pogo. Act just like you perfect. don't fucking know shit, <laughs> right? Because you don't know shit. So, <laughs> good goodness, like, that's a good way to say it. Man, I'm offended. It's not that. <laughs> then shut us off, like. <laughs> Those who know, don't talk, those who talk don't know. Dude, dude. Okay, so that's hilarious that you just said that, Brandon. Because I this just thought of that. This is awesome. I'm sorry. This is awesome. I... This is like because James loves Coco. I love Coco. <laughs> this is why we resonate right now. I'm sorry, but, but serious. <laughs> it's a good movie. If you don't have children, it's like, yo, these people are fucking. Yeah, you losers. gotta have children to understand. <laughs> Young children, you don't understand. We there's only so many things we can yeah. watch. Okay, <laughs> if you have children in the house, because they're gonna see the yes. shit you're watching. Exactly, bro. Only exactly. so many, so you gotta watch all of it all the time. <laughs> And obviously, you're going to try to push them to picking the ones that you want. It's like, oh, no, not that. How about this? Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the better ones, you know? Oh, give it a take. God. Give it a take, you know? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, they're putting some absolute trash on Disney. They were talking about microaggressions on Disney kids or whatever. I was like, because I like niece- a pride section on Disney Plus, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? Not on ours. What the hell? I don't see that on ours. Yeah, Florida, they probably don't let that shit fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. Wow. You don't see that in our on our Miami, show. Oh, really? Yeah. You right, should look right. a little harder, bro. You get it, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see no pride. I'm sex. going. I remember to that Miami. pride in Miami. They let it go. They. Miami I remember they had pride. something for Pride Month for a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude, everyone dude, does. Dude, Every corporation well. puts on their pride suit. You know, it's like, hey. And then right at the end of that month, they, they that have shit a, off, a you know? collection of like shit to watch. Like they have on Disney Plus, like yeah, they all like have their logos on Twitter. But on Disney Plus, they're gonna put out a collection of shit to watch, like (laughs) that's all related to it of who you fuck on Disney Plus. That's crazy. There's so much. This is America. It's getting crazy, man. This is Babylon. Yeah. This is Satanism. It's like that childish (laughs) Gambino video. This is America. You ever see that? Don't oh yeah. man, yeah, dude, yeah. right? There's so many like little hidden truths in that video, right? Kids are wearing masks, and it was right. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it was wild video, man. What year was it? 2015, I think, or 2016, maybe. I can't. 16, yeah, yeah. Donald Trump, maybe right when he was president. This is America. Per, mm-hmm. per usual, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably better off. <laughs> well, it's guys, okay. let's um. Let's plug uh, your show one more time. Let's. Uh... I'll put it in the chat again. Brandon Bonanza ch- uh, YouTube channel. Go subscribe. They interview people. They're consistent. They interview tons of great people. Yeah, like James. Like yeah, me. It was a great show. Like James. Yeah, we talked. Where's we that? had a great conversation. We waited so long to have him on, too. Because uh, everything, we were all kind of busy. But, yeah, it was crazy. It was just perfect timing, though. Like... All the stuff we want to talk about lined up. Yeah, it was. It Brandon, was excellent. I pulled this card during the show. That's a good card. The eleven, which is kind of like the eight. Hold on, let me see it. I didn't which see my, it. Which yeah. are my numbers? Because that's mm-hmm. the uh, sh- strength card, and in that deck was the only deck really where it switched to eleven. But usually it's number eight, so it's crazy good synchronistic because you talked about eight and what that represents. And it's also strength, and it's really about the inner strength to do the things that you have to do. She's basically, on that representation, she's riding a lion, but in the rider weight, she's actually opening a lion's mouth. Or closing it. Yeah, or closing it, because she has no fear. Bro, this is dope. (laughs) That's my card, y'all. This is great, man. This is a good time. We got to do this again, you know, for sure. Sweet. Yeah, we would definitely oh, yeah. We had have fun. Totally. Yeah, go around two for this. This is a good times. time. Yeah. yeah, very stimulating. I enjoyed it, man. It was good for the soul. It's great to have uh to resonate with like-minded people, you know, with everything going on in the world and what we go through through uh daily life. Uh, and I'm happy that we're able to create a place for people to come in the chat and say hello to their friends and blah 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 and all that good stuff. 
And yeah, it's just great awesome. vibes all around. Wow, you know, and all the new Nodell people subscribed to Brandon Bonanza, Cammy yeah. Nodell. Nice. That's wow. Oh, Cammy's a legend. Busted. You guys should uh, maybe have her on. I think you guys would love to have talk to her. She she plays with some tarot cards and yeah, and she has a little workstation. She can blow your mind with some stuff. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, hit us up. We'll totally have her on, dude. I'd love to talk about the tarot. She's oh, brilliant. Man, she will she subscribed. You know, y'all gotta subscribe. Yeah, hit us up on Telegram or find us. Uh, do you leave a YouTube comment? And who who Should was it? You Cammy. y'all can hook y'all can Aisling hook us up. Seven she... one seven. Um, oh, that's, that's her. Um, okay, Bob Nodell's wife from Glowbusters. Cami, okay. she did. And she did the second son um, uh, with Crow. Well, the po- the the um, the filters. All I'm gonna say is, oh yeah, I quadruple. Showed the that's second all I'm son. Say. The quadruple. quadruple. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, she's got gravy. And she can show you like in real life. She showed me shit in, like, like, man, and her and Zach. And they're going to have something at Flatsoberfest. Um, oh, let's plug that real quick before we get up out of here. Yeah, Flatsoberfest, um, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flatsfestivals.com. Everyone go there and um, get your tickets. It's so worth it. I've been telling people don't regret it. Like, I used to regret these because I didn't used to go, but. Um, <laughs> I used to regret, nah, I can't I used to miss regret them. Now. Yeah, I would watch them, and because I couldn't go, I was I like, know, right? I, I just wasn't able to each time. But still, I was like, damn, I should have made it. I should have made it. You know, because they're so fun, dude. They October. and yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. no. I'm excited. October 21st to 23rd, uh, Greenville, South Carolina. It's gonna be a great time, guys. There's a huge park across the street. Uh, the day before, you know, a bunch of people are going to be hanging out, man. It's so fun. Um, you get to hang out with like-minded individuals and, like, connect and recharge yourselves. Um, and it's just, it's a great experience, man. It's such a great time. And there's a lot of great speakers that are going to be there. I mean, I got the video. I can play the video. Check this out, guys. Quick video, Flattoberfest. It's going to be a blast. Can't fucking wait. Yeah, dude. Flatoberfest, it's back. Greenville, South Carolina, October 22nd and 23rd. With the grand return of Mark Sargent. And live music from Chief Crow and the Flat Earth Worms. Austin Witsit of Witsit Gets It. Benjamin Balderson of Olden's Alchemy. Jason Lindgren of Secrets of Saturn and Crow 777 Radio. Marty Leet of GnosticAcademy.org. One Big Love. How the World Works with Cammy and Zach. And new music by Austin and Kai Witsit. Sean Griffin of Kingdom and Context. Yeah, man. Karen makes some good ass videos. Good little promo videos. That's <laughs> um, yeah, Flattoberfest on um, flatearthfestivals.com. Go get your tickets. It's going to be a great time. Can't wait. I can't um, wait I'm so excited. Yes. And um, one more thing. We got 
some websites. What is it? More laws, more problems dot com. Yep. Let me put this in the chat one more time for you guys. You wanna go ahead and share that again one more time? If you don't mind. Go on, Brando. Uh, if you go to morelawsmoreproblems.com, click on the <laughs> over here tab. And that's where you can find all our shows, our podcasts. We have it on iTunes and Podbean and anywhere you get your i um your your uh, podcast. So if you just listen, or we go to the Brandon Bonanza channel on YouTube, and there's several ways to support us. If you'd like to at morelawsmoreproblems.com, but the best way you can support us is every Thursday night we premiere our shows, we pre-record them, and then premiere them every Thursday at 8:33 Eastern Standard Time. So we're in the live chat, and we got a really good of uh i call them slaves because they're our slaves uh <laughs> followers <laughs> and they're really awesome though so we have a good time in the chat and you know there's never any nonsense it's like this chat like really awesome so if you're not yeah doing yeah it, that's so intense you guys are so common like nice people <laughs> <laughs> And you call your your. Yeah, we're not trying to rape you. We're not making claims. We're just asking questions. And some people get a. Little we all get one claim per show. Yeah, yeah. We all get one. It's it's our opinion. That's our claim. Right. Yeah, I'll make some claims. Yeah. No, I love it, man. I appreciate this. Really quick, I know we want to get out of here, but yeah, so the no, go ahead. Last card I want to show everybody because. This card is, they numbered it zero, like in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and it brought a really important aspect into what a lot of people are missing about this card. Because this is a card that actually journeys through all of those different, this is like the player character, right? He journeys through all of these different archetypes and times in his life and all this stuff. And he could learn to appreciate it and be thankful and have gratitude and find it funny and be kind of like a funny guy about it, you know? And because he's about to walk off a cliff, that's another like really important motif. So it's like you're always on the edge, right? You're living on the edge, but you don't care. You have no fear. You're carefree about it. Um, so that's just something I want to share with everybody because I feel carefree like free or not in fear. Yeah, exactly. And if you could look at yourself in that way, exactly. The no fool cares is like in the jester. The yeah, it's from the jester, really. So it's like laugh at. I think Jesus was a comedian, and they took all the best stuff out, all his good material. Somebody stole it. Dave Chappelle's <laughs> doing it right now, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the OG truther. That's yeah, how I look at it. You know? But I also think he was like hilarious. I really, really do. Like <laughs> archetype, at least. If you don't believe he was like a real man, okay, then that archetype that's written in the stars, you know. Or you can. I believe it was both. Really, I think it just. That's the way it manifests here. I think we're just getting the total wrong story. I think there was a guy who lived that life, but we're just given the Hollywood, you know, gravelled version of it. Yeah. I mean, they Could made it be? Columbus to we be. Don't know. So it's like Christopher Columbus, they made him a hero. It's like, ugh, you know. I know, man. <laughs> so just imagine <laughs> how it's the other it. way. Yeah. <laughs> like demonize people. So, yeah, that's all I'm saying. But yeah, this was great, guys. I had a really, really good time. Yeah, man, I appreciate this. This is a blast. Hey. Um, you guys, uh, you want to plug? Did you plug the Telegram group? They got an awesome Telegram group, guys. Uh, they share a lot <laughs> of good stuff too. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Hit us up on Telegram if you want to join it. How can they find us? Well, they can go to t.me forward slash over Sharon. And they can comment on any of the latest episodes. And if they want to join the, the actual chat group, they can make a comment in there and we can send them an invite. Yeah, nice. we're sharing a lot of gravy and a lot of humor in there. So it's a really good place. But people always share a lot of good quotes too, like um, stuff about working on yourself and all that shit. So yeah, and there's some really good people in there. Michelle's in there, I believe. Or maybe, yeah, she's in there yeah. now we had her on so she's always talking about reiki and all this stuff yeah and uh oh also i wrote a book so if you want to read that it's called shadow worked with a ed shadow .com. you can go there and it's just like a pdf form but i have it on multiple platforms uh ways to get it so you can always hit me up there nice yeah i'll probably gonna rewrite it i think but it's pretty good as it is right now all right oh, cool. um what did I wanted to say? Let me 
check it out. Um, yeah, so next week, guys, we're going to have Walt on oh, Flat shit. Earth Head from I Iron Roll Media. Media. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and we're going to get into, well, we kind of got into it tonight, um, but we're going to get into the topic of the afterlife, like what happens after this, and maybe uh, I'd like to get into what other civilized ancient civilization said about said afterlife and then how it ties to luminaries and um there's many things that we can talk about walt has looked into that subject um so this is gonna be a great show um i'm looking forward to it we might have another guest to join us um i'm really looking forward to that because you know these are the questions that you know, I would say haunt me sometimes. I'm going to keep it real. You know, like, uh, who are we? What are we? What is this place? You know, and what happens next? Like, uh, you know, sometimes those questions, come, they come up more often than not, you know. So it's fun um, to speculate. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, you have that question. You ponder what human doesn't think about that, you know. Right. I don't know. Totally. Oh, that's what I was going to say. One thing Sharon didn't say in the Law of One stuff was uh, this is the only realm, really quickly, that we have free will. This is the only level of consciousness that we actually possess free will. Really? Yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, because I definitely think that there's free will. Some people think that that's not real, but no. No, I think it's woven in there, and that's kind of what this is about. It's to master that. So even if you're screwing up, I say you just screw up until you're sick of it, and then you can heal. So I don't, you know. That's why I think it goes on so long. But. That is a healthier mindset than most addicts that hate themselves for what they do on a daily basis. Mm. That they, you know, yeah. That's yeah. A good thing. Oh, yeah. I hated myself. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of that, we're going to be having a Break in the Chains episode um, at the end of next month that's coming up. We got a guest lined up, my boy Doug. Uh, he's He was in the chat earlier. He's probably listening. Uh, you guys probably seen him hop on once or twice. Um, he's hopped on on Jaren's stream a couple times. He has a beautiful little greenhouse, and yes. he's just a great guy. And he's going to have an amazing uh, conversation with us on Breaking the Chains. It's going to be Volume 7. going to be a great time. And we got and Jaronism on the 7th of next month. Jaronism too, as well. What was that, bro? And maybe uh, Volume 8 of uh, Breaking the Chains could be... Um... My friend Christian, who did, he did an Ibogaine um, session for, for like depression, not drug addiction. Oh, let's do it! And I so I, 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 I got to know him before he did it, and then he did it, and then you know, great, great results. And his mom, his mom wrote me a really nice email. And, nice uh, man. Yeah, really. Yeah, cool we can line stuff. that up. He wants to come on and share that, you know. Yeah, and I, I like hearing those. He said he wants to, so okay. Bet. I was like, Austin yeah, probably would yeah. like to hear it, you know. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right, guys, this is great. Thank you so much, everyone in the chat. Much love to y'all, Rockfin. Much love. Yeah, YouTube. thank you, Brandon. Yes, Brandon, Thanks, Sharon. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for coming you. on and over sharing. Mm -hmm. I need yeah, this man, on the mellow Thank you. You the shit out of that. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. All right, y'all. Much love, everyone in the chat. Um, hope you have a great night, day, wherever you are on this. Uh, Big shout out to the realm. Of existence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the great people. You guys come in here and you set the tone. Honestly, that's that's how it works. Here, you guys are a big part of it as well. So thank you so much. Um, next show Sunday, nine a.m. Um, Eastern, check us out. Awaken Bake, myself, James, Grounded Extracts, um, Chris, uh, Flatman X, and then you got Mike from the THC show. It's going to be a good time. And then next Wednesday, we're going to have um, another great show. So peace and love. Let's put it in the air one last time. Um, we'll see you guys later. Oh, and when you keep it real, you keep the real ones. Keep it real. That's right. Peace.